Hello, hello. All right, let's talk about ease and let's talk about seven things that we do in our lives to sabotage the ease that we say we want, the ease that we say that we're moving towards. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Stephanie Perry. I'm a house sitter. I'm the creator of House Sitter School and the co-creator of Exodus Summit. I help black women take a sabbatical, move abroad, bop around as a digital nomad, all while embracing ease. If these things sound good to you, make sure that you hit the subscribe button, please. Subscribe to this YouTube channel and turn on notifications. Ring the notification bell so that you will be notified when I post a new video or when I go live. Welcome. All right, welcome friends in the chat. Welcome guys. Um, so uh, this is gonna be probably a shorter video than we're, a shorter live stream than we're used to. So get your comments in now. If you haven't um, yet, make sure that you say good morning. Say good morning. Good morning, Maria. Good morning, Janae. Good morning, Felicia. Good morning, Auntie Trey. Good morning, Tours to Cruz. Good morning, Ms. Allen Talkin. Good morning. Deborah Livingston, good morning, T. Brown. Okay, so get your good mornings in. Uh, we're going to move through this video a little bit quickly today uh, because we'll talk about it later. We'll talk about it. I, uh, yeah, uh, okay, <laughs> we'll talk about it in a minute. All right, but good morning or good afternoon if you're in Europe, as our friend Halisi is. Good morning, Halisi from Our Black Utopia. All right, we're going to talk about seven things that um, we do to sabotage the ease that we're moving towards, right? We're moving towards embracing ease, um, doing things that require less struggle, <laughs> more flow in our lives. But uh, some things that we do are sabotaging those things. And by we, I mean we, you and me. My mom preached um, at her church the other Sunday, last Sunday, and I talked to her yesterday and I said, how did it go? And she said, I think I was a little too stern. <laughs> I, I want to make sure with this that I'm not too stern, that I'm not coming across too stern. Because I'm not saying you're doing this wrong and I'm doing it perfectly. That's not the message here today. Okay, these are things that we do, that I think we as black women do, including me, myself, personally. Things I think that we do that directly sabotage, directly go against what we truly want, which really is ease, right? We truly do want ease. We truly do want flow in our lives. We truly do want a life where we don't have to struggle, where we can reject struggle, a life where we choose what we have, what we work towards, and what things we put down. Uh, and we put down a lot more than we pick up, right? I think those are the things. That's I know black women are, is not one group of people, it's not one person, but I think that's something that we can all say we want. I think, I think that's something we all want. But I come up with seven things I think that we do that um, sabotage this ease, that sabotage this flow in our lives. I'm gonna list them out for you now and then we're gonna talk through them. Number one, struggling in silence. Number two, identifying with a restrictive label. Number three, valuing money over time. Number four, treating everything as urgent. Number five, volunteering. <laughs> volunteering, <laughs> leading, I'll do it. Number six, not having any lazy friends. Not having any lazy friends is sabotaging you. Number seven, chasing income streams. I don't like that we're ending on chasing income streams, so maybe we'll come up with an eighth one. Maybe some of you today will give us an eighth. I don't like that that's the last one. I don't like it. I like to have a certain flow to my outlines. This outline has very little flow. This has been the hardest week I've had in quite a while. Um, and I, so let's get to number one, struggling in silence. Let's get to it. This is the hardest week I've had in quite a while. And I thought maybe I was having some sort of breakdown. And I didn't say anything hardly. If you came to my live streams on my other channel, which is called Stephanie Perry Media, um, we do co-working sessions on my, my other YouTube channel. It's a pretty new channel. And we get together at 5.30 Central Time, 6.30 Eastern Time most days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, usually, sometimes not all four days. 
Uh, we get together and we do some working. I've been crying on them live streams this week. I mean, it's just been, <laughs> I'm like, am I having a breakdown? Is this a breakdown? I don't have any real reason to have a breakdown, but do people have breakdowns for a reason? I don't know. And I didn't know. And so I just struggled in silence. I met with Rashida and Francis the other day, yesterday, for a our team meeting. And Rashida was like, what's wrong with you? And I just cried and cried. And then Frances hopped on the meeting and she said, oh, perimenopause. <laughs> oh, hormones. And I was like, oh, duh. <laughs> I thought I was breaking down. I thought like, can you have a break? Do people have a go from everything is good to I have had a breakdown in like two days? How is it possible? that I'm having a breakdown over nothing, right, over nothing. Nothing was happening, no struggles, no stressors, no new stressors, right? And I, but I didn't say anything. I did cry on the live streams <laughs> this week, but I didn't really say, uh, I'm struggling here. I need something. I, said, well, I don't know what it is. As soon as I did, I got my uh, an unofficial diagnosis that totally makes sense and that I will follow up on this next week coming up. I'm in Costa Rica. Uh, and I'm going to go to the doctor. <laughs> I'm going to go to the doctor like a grown-up. In the United States, when we have struggles, sometimes we have to compare. We have to like decide, like, is it worth this copay, right? Or if you don't have insurance, I'm a person who, in the U.S., I'm underinsured, right? So is it worth it? But here in Costa Rica, I'm pretty sure it's going to be not very much money. I'll keep you posted. I'm going to go to a doctor who specializes in hormone things <laughs> and women <laughs> and see what they have to say. Uh, because I can't keep having this week over and over again. This is new to me. Hormonal struggles are new to me. I never had too much of a PMS problem until the COVID, until that first time I got COVID. I never really deal, dealt with men, premenstrual syndrome. I never really dealt with stuff. But I'm about to, I'm fixing it. I'm not having this week over and over again. I'm going to tell you that, right? Number one way that we are not embracing ease is that we're struggling in silence. Because one, one word from Francis, and I was like, oh, I don't necessarily feel better, but I feel better about not feeling good. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I don't necessarily feel better, right? I didn't have night sweats last night, so that was nice. But I don't, I've still cried probably every three hours. I think I'm on a three-hour crying cycle. Every three hours that I'm awake, I am in a puddle, <laughs> right? I am still feeling out of control of things, right? Swinging wildly, but I don't feel like, um, I don't feel like there's no hope. I don't like the feeling of hopelessness, right? I don't feel like there's no hope and I don't feel like I'm just losing it and this is just how it's gonna be forever, right? There's something to be said for a sister giving you a word of hope. <laughs> and that word of hope was perimenopause. <laughs> Like, yeah, yeah. As soon as she, I'm telling you, the, we, we were on the screen, Rashida and I were on the screen together and I was just crying, right? I had done nothing, no work that, nothing that was crying worthy. I was just crying on the screen with Rashida. Francis popped onto the screen and just looked at me and said, oh, okay, perimenopause. <laughs> we don't struggle in silence. If you don't have someone who you can say, listen, this, I'm struggling. Listen, this is hard. Listen, here's how I'm feeling. I don't know what to do about it. If you don't have that person, find her. I don't know. I know that wasn't a helpful piece of advice. Uh, but find, find somebody. Get somebody. Rashida talks. Rashida, I don't know that she's done a video about this, but she's talked about this with me in the real world, about friendship, about women, friendships not being what they could be, Right? Uh, women friendships are all powerful <laughs> because women are the best people. Having friends who are the best people is really a wonderful thing to experience. And not having those in your life is hampering your growth and your peace. If you don't, ha if you have it, keep it, <laughs> nurture it. Right? If you don't have it, you have to find it. You have to find it. 
Sharon. Hi, Sharon. I've had a rough week as well, but what I've learned in the past is that when I'm about to have a breakthrough, things get difficult. That is also correct. Also, yes. Um, yeah, the hardest part is usually like the, you, you remember that graphic of the man who's using a, like a pickaxe to get through some rock? And right, he's at the hardest part. He doesn't know he's just like this close, this many more strikes to break through, right? I believe in a breakthrough, um, but I don't believe in struggling so much to get to the breakthrough that the breakthrough is no longer worth it. You can struggle so much to get to what you're trying to get to that you can't enjoy the thing that you're looking to get. I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that. Um, yeah, Maria says there is talk, there's real talk about that. There's studies that say that's why women live longer, sister support. I can believe it. I can believe it. Um, because men have in, at various times in my life tried to be, tried to lean on me for the support that they weren't getting from other men. I stopped doing that years ago, but because I was in the army as an adult, I had a lot of men friends. And they tried to make me their de facto therapist or their support person without being capable of reciprocating, right? They weren't able to do that for me, but they needed me to do that for them. Years ago, I gave it up. But I can see that that would be a factor in longevity, right? And not just quality of life, but quantity of life. I'm not crazy about my puff today, but we'll just, keep, I'm going to try to get over it. Y'all know I'm vain. <laughs> Even when I don't look good, I want to look halfway good. <laughs> yeah. Kemi says, I told my sister this week to get a therapist to unpass, unpack her past baggage and get a life coach to help her see the way forward. Yes. A nice sandwich with the two. Ivana did a wonderful job of explaining that a couple of weeks ago here on this channel, right? Therapist for the past, coach for the future, right? Uh, what a team. What a team. Therapy is not as easy to come by, right? A good therapist. Things have changed in the therapy world. Some therapists are moving into coaching, especially Black women therapists. There is a trend where Black women therapists are moving into coaching, and they may be doing some past and future work, right? They're doing some therapy slash coaching work combined, uh, so that's a thing as well. But yes, what a wonderful combination, right? Nick Jones says, I'm so guilty of suffer, suffering in silence. We are going to find somebody, somebody today who we are going to build a relationship with um, because we're not doing that. <laughs> we're, not, we're just not doing it anymore, Nick. Uh, yes, you were guilty of it in the past, but we're not doing that anymore. I don't have good information on how to find that person. Rashida on her channel has a video on uh, free and low cost therapy resources for black women. Let me see if I can find her in a, find that video in a reasonable amount of time. Rashida's channel is Rashida Dow, and she has a video on free and low cost therapy resources. And then of course, therapy for black women is, a, is an entire platform that probably has some helpful info as well. Okay, but I'm gonna share Rashida's video link here. And then I'll link to it in the, vi in the description of this video in the future. If you're watching this video from the future, hello friends in the future, I hope things are great. Uh, this is Rashida's video on free and low cost therapy for black women. Um, a team, so, uh, a team, get a team, right? Get a team, yeah, get a team of people who are on your side. Who you, so that you don't have to shoulder things alone, so that you don't struggle in silence. A team of people. In, uh, in an ideal world, you would have a therapist, you would have a coach, you would have friends, and you would have an accountability partner, like an accountability partner, like, Stephanie, did you, go, did you make your doctor's appointment? <laughs> Nick, did you, did you go to a coaching session? So-and-so, have you made, Doris, have you made a, a, a schedule some time with your girlfriends? Jean, right? Have you reached out for support with XYZ, right? In, in, the, in an ideal world, we would have all of these people on our team, 
right? Just different labels or different, you know, titles. But we would have all of these people. Uh, I, I have those people and I'm very thankful. I'm very grateful for them. I'm not the best at saying that. <laughs> I'm not the best at saying that. But I'm very grateful for them because they're the difference between me being me. I, well, I guess I did do a whole video dedicated to, <laughs> I did a whole video dedicated to 24 black women who made me the person that I am, which is a, a whole person, right? A whole healed, happy, joyful person. So I did make a whole video about them. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we need a team. PJ Afro Blue 92. I really need somebody like that in my life right now. It's been rough. Okay, aside from therapy, right? Therapy is, I think, the first answer, right? I think no, nobody would disagree that therapy is the first answer. Um, accountability partners and friends, here's how I know how to find them. I know how to find accountability partners and friends in places where people gather who have similar interests as me, right? So... I know Rashida because a woman connected us because we both were taking our sabbaticals at the same time. Courtney, Courtney said, "How? Oh, you're both you both traveling the world right now. You're both kind of the same age. Rashida's younger than me. You're kind of the same age. You're traveling the world. You're both black women from the U.S. I think you should meet each other, right? But Rashida and I are also in a lot of communities where we could we should have bumped into each other before. We're both in a community called Nomadness Travel Tribe, right? And so we we both have a lot of friends in common or like associates and friends and acquaintances in common. Uh, so if you can spend time with people who have interests similar as from you, similar to you, you can find and form friendships as an adult. This is why the Exodus Summit community, this is why women in that community are bonding so strongly because they're finding women who are into what they're into. For some of them, it's just, I'm into moving to Mexico. You're into moving to Mexico. <laughs> Let's be friends, right? Uh, for some of them, it's, it's different. But so for some of them, it's I'm a mom with adult children in the U.S., uh, but I'm moving abroad, and this is something that was dif difficult for me, uh, and I need somebody who can understand that to be my friend, right? Uh, but, but getting yourself in community with people who are into what you're into is a way that you can form friendships as an adult, real friendships, Right. So first practice, do first therapy, first therapist. Right. But next practice some do put on your calendar time to do things that you enjoy in places where you can meet other people who enjoy those things, even if that means online. I, that's been a real changer for me and for a lot of women doing the things that you like to do on the Internet where other people, or, or in person, where other people are also doing those things, is a way for you to meet new friends, new accountability partners, new sisters. I, I always have to smirk when I say sisters, because some of us have, some people have sisters, they don't, like, we need a better word than sisters. Rashida says chosen sisters, right? Chosen sisters. Because <laughs> some people have sisters they don't fool with. I'm, I don't mess with her. <laughs> but more chosen sisters. I need a better word than sisters. <laughs> All right. So there are 500 women here on this YouTube channel, on this YouTube video right now, right? 500 women on this YouTube video right now. There is someone here who would be probably, probably odds, you know, just playing the odds, somebody here who would be a wonderful friend, a wonderful companion, a wonderful sister, a wonderful team member, community member, whatever, for another person here. Um, but this is not the best, the easiest place to meet people. Now, people have made friends here in this chat. People have made friends in this chat, right? But it's not the easiest place because there's not a lot of, it's me talking. It's not a lot of interaction. But, and it's hard, you can't be like, here's my phone number, call me, you know? So get into another, get into a community where you can find her. Get in, or I'm assuming she's a her. Because <laughs> some, I don't know, women are better people than men. So, right? Marty by nature is waving her hand, right? Me, me, right? You 
um, do need to take it seriously and put effort into it. Just a couple of weeks ago on this channel, we took time and put on our calendar things that are important to us for this year. So if you need to do it, put some time on, or either leave this video now and do it, or put some time on your calendar to find some communities that might have some people you might like in the communities, right? If you want to move abroad or, or take a, a career break or sabbatical, if that's your thing and you're a black woman and you would love to um, get in community with other black women who are into trying things a new way, then join the Exodus Summit Facebook community. I'm gonna drop that link here. There are women in the Exodus Summit community who have bonded and formed la lasting, deep, serious friendships or beyond, sisterhood. Um, number one, Rashida and I get to take the credit for it. <laughs> but number two, it's because this is just a place where the same, we have very, I'm sorry, is it all, uh, people don't like it when you say stuff like this, but we have a very certain kind of woman, right? We have, a, it, she's different ages. She may be a mom, she may not be a mom, she may be a grandmom, right? I don't mean that kind of woman, different economic tiers, right? But what I mean is she has a certain, there is a specific mindset. Uh, we pro partially because, or not la in largely in part, because we believe in treating black women with loving kindness. And we say those words out loud. And so the women who gravitate towards our group, at least as long as while they're in our group, they also treat black women with loving kindness. There's a kind of person in the Exodus Summit community um, who, you're, you, when you make a friend in the Exodus Summit community, you made a friend. <laughs> you made a friend. So I would invite you to start, start with therapy. Okay, I don't want to jump over the therapy part. Start with therapy. But then also add to your calendar finding communities of women where, uh, who like the things that you like. Right? I'm in, uh, what is it called? I'm in a crochet community. I wish there was a black crochet community. Uh, I'm in, a, yeah, I'm in some communities of some things who like some, who, of, with some women who like some of the stuff that I like. And it's easier to make friends in that type of space, right? Than just all out, like, I don't know how to do this, right? Get yourself into communities where you will find her. Get you, put yourself in the best place, put yourself in the best position to find her, okay? All right, so number one thing that um, we're doing, I think, that we're doing that sabotages our ease is that we're struggling in silence. Uh, so speaking, so we talked about the different people on your team, right? The therapist, the coach, the friend, the sister, the accountability partner. So I've created accountability partners over on my other YouTube channel, which is called Stephanie Perry Media. We do co-working sessions over there in the mornings. Um, and I promised there and here that I would report back on something. So I'm going to report back to you as my accountability partners. We made our calendars here on a video live stream called Let's Put Ease on Our Calendar. And I told you I was going to do a profit and loss statement on February 9th. I was going to block off Fe February 9th on my calendar and get my business money together. And I did it. Turns out I kind of already had a profit and loss statement after I watched a couple of videos on how to do it. I was like, I've been doing it, but just in two different parts. I've been doing a profit statement. I didn't know that. And then I've been doing kind of a loss, like I have an expenses, a rolling like monthly expenses thing, but I hadn't been comparing the profit with the expenses. So on the ninth, I got together, I made myself a full on Excel spreadsheet. Cause I had been doing this, doing things in notions I didn't make an, exp I made a Google sheet. I made myself a full on Google sheet and did it. So accountability partners, I did the thing that I said I was gonna do that I didn't wanna do. I did it, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. And I had good, I had parts of it already done, right? Accountability partners really take you far. So number one, struggling in silence. We've talked about the solutions to that. Therapists, friends, time with friends dedicated, committed time with friends, and accountability partners. All right, I'm talking, but I need to be in the chat. So how, how are we feeling about this? Okay. 
Halisi, who is in Portugal, <laughs> Halisi and her husband have moved to Portugal and her YouTube channel is Our Black Utopia. And they talk about their move to Portugal and moves for other people who are close to retirement age or just like, no, I don't want to say that, ready to retire. You don't have to be retirement age to, re to be ready to retire. Halisi says, I got my accountability partner because Stephanie and Rashida assigned Angela to me on air. <laughs> it's been a blessing and now I have a new friend. <laughs> Yes. Okay. So people will match make an, a partner and friend to you. We Cor Courtney match made me and Rashida. Okay. Courtney did that for us. We're going to carry it. We're going to pass it along. Okay. We're going to pa pay it forward. So I'm glad. All right. We're going to take credit, right? We're going to take credit for all of the things that you do together <laughs> and for all of the, we're going to take credit for the, hopefully for the bond, for the love, that is there. We take the credit for it. <laughs> so I'm glad. <laughs> yes. All right. Okay. Fantasia says, thank you for these active steps. You're welcome, Fantasia. I love steps. Okay. Welcome to this YouTube channel. I love steps. I'm going to break something down into some steps. Okay. I am a person who is it's easy for me to come up with like, oh, here's the vision. Here's the thing. And then never do anything, never make any progress. So I love writing out some steps. So if I'm not going to do nothing else, I'm going to give you some action steps. Okay. <laughs> it's a thing that I need. Yes. PJ Afro Blue says feeling a little better. I'm glad. Okay. But do, do the things, do the things, do the things. We are good at diagnosing ourselves, right? Here's a, here's a deficiency I have, right? But then never, then, but then just staying there. Let's move into that step. Let's move into that. Let's move it around. Okay, number two. That was actually number two. We're good at identifying things, what we would call deficiencies or shortcomings, or the opposite. We're good at identifying our abilities and keeping ourselves there, keeping ourselves in that box. So for number two, the number two thing that I think that we do that sabotages our ease is we take on a restrictive label as our identity. I mean by this, I am a superwoman, right? I am black excellence. Y'all know how I feel about that, right? I am an introvert and a hermit. I am a, a, a minimalist. I'm going to say this in, with quotation marks. I am because there is co competitive minimalism. I'm not talking about minimalism. I live out of two suitcases, so you can call me a minimalist. But I mean the competitive. I have one fork, one spoon, <laughs> one pair of underwear that I wash every day. Right? I am a competitive minimalist, right? There are labels that we can take on that become our entire identity. And I think that that is the antithesis of embracing ease and flow in our lives. If ease and flow, if ease requires flow, I think it does, right? If ease requires flow, which to me is just the opposite of struggle, right? Then it also requires us to be able to go with the flow and not to be so rigid in our identities. I'm speaking to you as I'm speaking to my, I'm speaking to myself as I'm speaking to you, all right? I am a hermit. I am a loner. I am an introvert. Uh, but those things don't serve me in the life I want, not in 360 degrees. Those things serve a slice of my life. The creativity slice of my life is very well served by, well, actually no, because co collaboration is one of the best creative tools. They kind of serve a slice of my life, but not my whole pie not the whole life pie. So me being all in on the hermit, introvert, loner label has disrupted the flow in my life. Who knows what else could be? Rashida and I, like I said, we should have met earlier. We have a lot of in common friends or a lot of in common acquaintances. We know a lot of the same people, but maybe me being a hermit and a loner Put, bear, put, a, put up a barrier or stopped something that could have happened sooner. I don't know, right? I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying this as a way to be mean to myself. I'm just throwing out possibilities, right? Maybe the hermit loner, Ste Stephanie, has 
<laughs> you know I want a yacht. Maybe that yacht sailed right by me <laughs> because I was so identifying. I was so stuck in this loner, hermit, introvert identity. Yes, know your strengths. I believe I love to take a personality test. I love knowing what I'm good at. I love knowing what I'm not good at, so I don't even have to worry about that. They said I'm not good at it. I don't even do that, right? I'm, I'm, I appreciate knowing myself really well. I think I'm pretty self-aware. But I don't want to box myself in. I don't want to box in. Um, oh, I need to go back to number one I see in the comments. I'm finally scrolling through the comments. I don't want to box myself in with that identity. And I don't want you to either. In particular, if your identity is black excellence. Trash it. That's not your identity. That's something somebody gave you. That's not you. It's not you. I promise. It's not you. Okay? Katrina, who is Miss Hurricane, I've dumped all those labels. Dump them. Just be you. Just be you. <laughs> Just be you. You who has flow. Right? Who has ease. Okay. All right, so these number one and number two, I think these comments apply to number one and number two. Don't diagnose yourself. <laughs> right? And don't speak those negative words. I had a pastor years ago when I was a child. He, he couldn't stand it when people would be like, my diabetes, my arthritis, it's not yours. <laughs> it's not yours. Stop saying my diabetes and my arthritis. It's not yours. <laughs> yeah. Right. We do. We do wear some of these things as a badge of honor. And what you don't see is really all you're doing is restricting yourself. You're so proud of this label that's put you in a box. You are so proud to be in that box. Girl, break out of the box. Again, I'm talking to me and you. OK, Connie Perry's words stuck with me when she said her first sermon. I think I was a little too stern. I hope I'm not coming across too stern. I feel I yes I don't physically I don't feel all the I don't feel the best. I had to cancel. I had we had a guest scheduled for today and I was like I can't cuz I'm not going to be nice to her. <laughs> I'm not going to be nice to my guest today. I don't feel it. Uh I had to do what I you got to do what you got to do. I had to go with the flow, right? I had to flow. How do I feel today? I I don't think I could conduct an interview in a proper way today. Because at any second, I will start crying. I, I'm on like a, a three-hour cry. I haven't cried at all this morning. So I don't know. <laughs> so how do we dis, dismantle that, I, that I, or form an identity that does not box us in? That's work. That's a lot of work. I'm a big fan of free time. Uh, every, pretty much every piece of advice I'm going to give you ever starts with get yourself a lot of free time. I'm a big fan of free time and trying new things and just rejecting labels that don't serve you anymore. I'm not that anymore. I reject it, right? I'm not the superwoman in this family anymore. I reject the label and I reject the labor. I reject the work that comes with that title. You can have it. Take the cape. I don't want it. <laughs> you can have my cape. You can have it. I, don't, I, I'm the, I promise I don't need it anymore. So how do we do it? We try some new stuff. I really like trying new things. We try some new things and some new things might, there are some identities that I want to take on. I want to be, I want the identity of a crocheter. <laughs> I want one of my labels that I want that's not going to box me in is a person who crochets things. <laughs> That's not going to box me in, but I won't know. I don't know that until I try some stuff. So how do we do it? Reject. We get get real, right? Get real with the labels that you're walking around in. What labels? What what identity have I created or have has been passed to me? This is a combination, right, of what's been given to you and what you've and what you've created for yourself. What what is that? What is that identity? What pieces of it do I, am I ready to drop today, today? And then what do, where's this, oh, where's the empty space? And then how do I fill some empty space? Free time and trying new things. I'm always going to tell you that, Yvette. 
free time, try something. Try anything that sounds interesting to you. Anything. You never know where it could lead you. Try anything that could interest you. Hello, Sun, Moon, Star. Today we are talking about uh, the seven the seven ways black women are sabotaging their own ease. And we're working through some steps to unsabotage. <laughs> to unsabotage. Welcome. All right. Okay, so back to number one. Janae says, please don't diagnose yourself. Get a therapist. And then also, Stephanie, don't be your friend's therapist, right? Don't And don't ask your friends to be your therapist. Get an actual therapist, right? So back to number one. Yes, so I, we talked about the team, building your team, your squad, your gang, 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 right? Therapist is a role on that team, but your friend should not be filling the role of therapist and accountability partner and friend and sister, right? There are different people that fulfill different roles, and the therapist is a real job <laughs> that requires real pay, a real compensation, right? The therapist, the coach, right? Your friends can't do that. Your friends, I don't think, your friends shouldn't be the that. E even accountability partners, even th there should be a delineation, I think, even with accountability partners. I could be wrong, especially if your accountability partners are like plan a vacation, right? It, but for me, having a business, my accountability partners cannot be also like, I can't make my friends my accountability partners. I need business accountability partners. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, because we, I think we've all been, as black women, we've all been the friend who was the therapist at some point. It doesn't feel good. And like, that's a job that is for pay. Where's my compensation? For the most part, the person who needs your, the friend to be their therapist can't pay you. <laughs> and they can't even reciprocate when you need a therapist. They can't reciprocate. So get a real therapist. Get a real therapist. Right? <laughs> They can't reciprocate anyway, right? They can't, they, you can do all this. Maybe you have the bandwidth at that point. Maybe you have the bandwidth and even some skill to like help them. But then when you need them, they can't do it for you. And then you resent them. I got out of that a long time ago. I stopped that a long time ago, right? Boundaries and relationships are key. Hello, your black therapist. <laughs> Hello, friend. Welcome, right? Boundaries and relationships are key. Okay, so the labels, all right? So the labels. Sonia says, I've always been an introvert, but since moving abroad, I'm stepping more out of my comfort zone. Good. You can be a new person in a new place, right? Some of the, those labels, introvert, hermit, some of those are not necessarily your actual personality. Some of those are responses to trauma and being in toxic situations and, you know, ways to protect yourself, protective devices. Some of them aren't even really you. Some of it is not really you. I am naturally a hermit. It just feels really good to me. <laughs> but it doesn't serve me in all parts of my life. So I'm not going to let it continue to be the boss of me. But you can act absolutely. You are a different person in a different place. I believe that. Leona, I agree. Accountability partners with the same mindset are great. I just started one. We meet every Saturday evening online. Wonderful. Get accountability groups together. Every time I do some sort of coaching, whatever it is, some sort of group coaching, women form accountability groups and continue afterwards. And I love it for them. Rashida and I host the Get Your Next Three Clients Challenge on tomorrow. We start the Get Your Next Three Clients Challenge tomorrow. Uh, one spot open. Let me put that in here. Uh, get your next three clients challenge, exodussummit.com slash next three clients. I think that might be where Halisi and Angela met, actually. Maybe, maybe you were indifferent. They both took the chat, or did Angela take the challenge? Yeah, they both took the challenge, but maybe different times. Right, so... Every time I, and then I do YouTube coaching, my YouTube coaching, um, chal my YouTube challenge starts on February 27th, right? And every time we do it, women in the community, keep it going. Stay accountability partners. I went to the one year anniversary of the over 60 YouTube accountability group, right? I did YouTube coaching with them in, in December of 2021. 
And in December of 2022, they invited me to their one year anniversary accountability meeting, right? These are women over, black women over 60 with YouTube channels and they get together every month and meet. Accountability partners will take you far. I love that, I love it. I went to the meeting now, some of them weren't making videos. So if y'all are here, I hope you've made the videos you promised to make, right? <laughs> you committed, right? <laughs> Some of them were, had stalled on making their videos, but they still were coming to the accountability meetings, which is important, right? You don't want to drop out of accountability meetings just because you're not doing it. That defeats the whole purpose of having accountability partners, right? The accountability piece is wonderful if you're looking to make progress on something in your life, even if that progress is more rest. Right? You can have some more rest accountability partners as long as you remember that these accountability meetings should go with the theme. Right, So if you're talking about how to incorporate more rest into your life, your accountability meetings should not be four hours every week. Right, It should go with the theme of the meeting, of the, of the, of the purpose, go, should the, atten the intent. Right, The execution should match the intent. Okay? If you need accountability partners, this is, again, seriously, my advice. Get in community with people who have similar interests. Find people who are into what you're into. If it's crochet, get yourself into some crochet communities. If it's moving abroad, get yourself in some moving, moving abroad communities. I told you about the Exodus Summit community. Get yourself in community with people who are into the thing that you're into, right? That's where you're going to find these, the, the community. That's where you're going to find the accountability. That's where you're going to find the friendships. Yeah. Seriously. Seriously. If you need to put a day on your calendar to get find some communities that you would be into, explore them. You know, not, it's not going to be a 100% success rate. Just because you join a community doesn't mean you're going to like them. Right? So join some. Check them out. If you need to put that on your calendar, put it on your calendar. Every Wednesday afternoon, I spend some time looking through a, group, through a group of people, right? I get approved into a community, and then I scroll around to see if I like them, <laughs> right? Yeah, do it. Janine says she would like to find writing accountability partners. Now, I have a second YouTube channel called Stephanie Perry Media, and we do co-writing co sessions. They're co-working or writing sessions. Uh, every day of Monday through Thursday, most weeks, but not some m most Monday through Thursday. But every now and then we'll skip a day. OK, uh, over there, there are quite a few women who are writing. Halisi, who's here today, is writing a book. I think it's OK to say that. I don't know now. <laughs> I don't, right. Uh, there are quite a few. We have a woman who is writing a. Um. Uh, miss, so I'm, I, my, I want to write a cozy mystery. There's a woman in there who's writing a cozy mystery right now. Uh, so come over to the, I would come, this is where you're going to find some black women writers if you're interested. We have a woman who has published several books, including on African spirituality, different, like Orisha. I think that, I think Orisha is the right word. I don't know. I don't, different African spirituality practices, right? So we've got women who write fiction and nonfiction. You can find yourself an accountability partner over there. Seriously, come over to my other channel, Stephanie Perry Media, and holler at the women in that community, right? We get together at 5.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central time, right? This is, you're, get in places where people are doing the things that you're into. So that's a community for black women who are writing a book, <laughs> right? I made it, I made it. I made this community because I wanted it, right? I wanted community with black women writers, fiction and nonfiction, because I, I want to do both. I'm, my nonfiction book is up first. If you absolutely cannot find the community, you can make it. You can start it. But it might already exist. You know, I believe in doing as little as possible. The as little as possible way is to just jump in something somebody already else start, somebody already started, <laughs> right? Yeah. All right. Okay, thank you. It is Orisha. Yeah, she's got, right? So we've got women who do a variety of different kinds of writing. Women at a variety of different levels. Women who are published, women who are self-published, women who are neither of that yet, right? Women who have ideas and an outline. 
Uh, if, if that's your thing, come over, join us, meet the women, say, Hey, connect to somebody, find you a partner, find you an accountability partner, a friend. Okay. Yeah. All right. How are we doing on our outline? Okay. So the identity thing, you get it, right? You get what I'm saying. Competitive minimalism, competitive travel, right? There are people who are travel. Like I got to, I want to visit a million countries. <laughs> I want to visit all 203 countries. Um, it's okay to say, I'm going to go someplace and enjoy it and not go to any place else. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, it's okay to not, to put yourself, take yourself out of the competitive travel space, competitive minimalism space, the competitive beauty space. I need to always look good because I've created an identity of, for myself that is a person who looks a certain way and now I have to always look that certain way. No, you don't. You can take yourself out of that box whenever you feel like it. Unbox. Unboxing. <laughs> Do your own unboxing video. <laughs> Do an unboxing video. Unbox yourself. These labels, it's, it's not a nice shorthand, right? So when I explain to somebody I'm an introvert, they understand why. If I go to a conference, I'm, I'm going to go to the first day. But on the second day, I'm seriously considering not showing up, right? So it's, it, it, it's a good shorthand to, so I don't have to explain to people from, this, from scratch what I'm into and what I'm like. But it's also restrictive. It's a restrictive label <clears throat> that is in, in direct opposition with flow. I want flow. I want flow for me and for you. All right. So number one, struggling in silence. Number two, ident creating an identity around restrictive labels. All right. Number three, valuing money over time. A way that we're not embracing ease is by valuing money over time. Money is in abundance. Time is not. Money is in abundance, but time is not. Everybody going to die. Okay. <laughs> I don't know who, who, if anybody ever told you, we all going to die. Our time is not in abundance. And so when you treat time as money and money as time, when you say that they have equal value, you're really devaluing the time. Time is really precious. If you can save yourself time in something by spending money on it and you have the money, do it. Do it. I don't care. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. If you can save yourself some time by spending some money and you have the money, do it. I don't care if it's paying somebody to do your laundry or clean the bathrooms. Do your hair, right? I've been, I bought a box of hair dye back with me from Puerto Rico because I can't find it in Costa Rica. Um, so I bought a box of hair dye, but I don't, who got time to dye my hair, right? Like if you can find, if you, if it's better, it's better. I'll say it's better to pay someone to do something for you. If it's going to save you time, than it is for you to spend the time, spend the money, save the time, spend the money, save the time. If you got it, use it. <laughs> use it for your benefit. We all going to die. We all going to die. Okay. I don't care if it's the 30 minutes it takes to wash and fold clothes, right? Fold, folding clothes is the biggest part of doing laundry. I don't care if it's that, that 15 minutes from folding laundry or the two hours that it would take me to make, I don't know. I can't think of anything right now. <laughs> two hours. Two, in two, so in, as a business person, I'll tell you this, as a person who owns her own business, in two hours, I can create and I can outline, make and edit a YouTube video that is going to make me thousands of dollars in the long run. In two hours, I can make a couple thousand dollars. I have plenty of YouTube videos that have earned me more than $1,000 already, right? Some of these videos are less than a year old. They continue to make money, right? In a couple of hours, I can make $1,000. In a couple of hours, I can send an email out and remind people about a coaching program that I'm doing, something that I sell, and make several hundred dollars, if not 1000 with one email, right? So me... 
cooking my own dinner when I could use, if that, if it's work time, right? Not all time is work time, but if it's work time, is my time better spent cooking my own dinner or making a YouTube video? The answer is making a YouTube video, right? Buy dinner, order dinner. Somebody will deliver it. Make it, package it, deliver it, right? Or go out to eat. Go out to eat it. I'm having a struggle with the packaging. I feel really bad because Costa Rica is very environmentally minded. And I'm like, man, I'm getting all this stuff delivered and all this packaging. So I got to go to, I need to go to more restaurants. (laughs) One of my goals for my last, this is my last month in Costa Rica for a while. One of my goals is go to more restaurants, <laughs> right? Because if instead I can make a YouTube video that's going to make me a thousand dollars, a couple thousand dollars, who knows over the lifetime? I have one video that's, I think my best performing video has made more than $10,000, more, more than 10. I might look that up for you, right? So does it make sense for me to be make, cooking my own dinner? I don't think so. I don't think so. Let's see. My best performing video is called Worst Countries for Black Travelers. It has 1.7 million views. That one video has earned me over the lifetime $25,669. That's one YouTube video. $25,669 in YouTube revenue. So yeah, I'm going to spend my hour, (laughs) if it's one or the other, I'm going to spend my hour making a YouTube video. Now, what is your equivalent, or sending a newsletter, sending an email out to my email newsletter gang, right? What is that equivalent for you? What is your thing? If I'm talking, okay, now I'm not saying all of your time should be spent doing work. You know that's not what I'm saying. I hope you know. Some of you are new. That's not what I, that's not what I mean. But I do mean, if it, if, there's, if it comes to an hour of either I do one or the other, right? Either I fold this laundry or I do X. What is that X for you? And how do you put a dollar figure on it? And is that dollar figure more than what it would cost somebody to do your laundry, cost you to pay somebody to do your laundry, what it, that what it would cost somebody to come and clean, what it would cost somebody to do your hair, come to your house and do your hair. I had a girl come to my house, a woman, she's a young woman. I had a woman come to my house and do my hair, right? Come to your house and do your nails. Rashida has a woman come to her house and do her nails and feet, right? Some things, some things Have a, have a direct dollar equivalent, or at least a minimum, right? So not every video of mine has made $25,000. I wish. I have over 200 videos, right? <laughs> Some videos of mine have made a dollar, I'm sure, right? But there is a, there is a, there's a dollar, like, average. There, there's an average, Right? I need to figure that. I need to find that. There is an average. So then, then I can say, I have an hour to do either this or that. If this is going to cost me less than, let's say the dollar figure is 100, 250, I'll say 250, $250 for an hour of my time. If doing my own nails over the course of an hour is going to cost me less than $250, I'm Let me start this over. If paying someone to do my nails is going to cost me less than $250, then I need to pay somebody to do my nails. Because I know I can make the $250 if I put in an hour of whatever. An hour, an email. Like I sent a newsletter out to to you guys, those of you who are on my email list. I sent a newsletter out about the the T-shirts that I sell, right? I sell merch for the Vacarian Sabbatical Fund. We... This says, this t-shirt gives black women a break. The proceeds from the Vacarian Sabbatical Fund go to pay a black woman to not work, right? To send her on sabbatical. I just sent an email about this two days ago, and the sales have been pouring into the shop. 
that was maybe 20 minutes of work, 20 or 30 minutes. I'm kind of slow with the email thing. That newsletter probably took me 20 or 30 minutes because I had to do some screenshots. Matter of fact, I did it during the co-working session. I did it during a 25-minute work session, so 25 minutes. Uh, but it's already made, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> I'm guessing we've gotten 50 sales in the shop since I sent that email. And the average sale is about 4 or $5. So 200, 50, is that $200? $200, right? $200 from that 25-minute email. Okay, so valuing money over time is a losing strategy. Money is in abundance, time is not in abundance. Okay, how, how, what are we thinking about this? Fevin and Mega, especially, Fevin, hi, especially things you don't like to do. Those are the best things to pay others to do. Right, then you're gaining time and joy. That's exactly right, because you've avoided something you hate doing. That's exactly right. Make a list. Write them down. What are some things I could jettison? <laughs> what are some things I could cut out all together? And then what are some things I can delegate? I'm going to delegate this to, the house, to a housekeeper, to a car washer, <laughs> to a car gasser upper, <laughs> right? Somebody will do it. Somebody will do it for me. Aw. Orletta says... Task Rabbit was founded by a black woman. She sold it. Okay, wonderful. Hi, thanks, Orletta. Black History Month fact. Thank you, Orletta. <laughs> right? Okay. Okay. Damali says, don't forget to hit the thumbs up on this video. Hitting the like button on the video really does give YouTube a piece of feedback that tells YouTube that you think it should recommend this video to other people. So if you think other black women would love this video, Please take a second, hit the thumbs up, hit the like button on this video so YouTube knows that. YouTube will go out and find other people that it thinks would be interested in this video. And it'll do that if you give it a little piece of data, a little feedback that says, this is a good one. <laughs> That's what the like button says. This is how other people need to see this. All right. Thank you, friends. I see you guys doing it. Thank you. Yes. We need to stop feeling guilty about letting these tasks go, right? <laughs> stop feeling guilty. The way, I think the one, a good way to stop feeling guilty is to see it as normal and seeing it as normal is having other people in your life who do things that way. <laughs> when you have friends who have a housekeeper come in, when you have friends who have somebody come and do their pedicures while they sit in their office chair and get some work done, or, or just veg out and watch Netflix. I don't know what Rashida does while the pedicure lady's there. I assume she does the combination of things. She might even fall asleep sometimes, right? When you have friends who do these things, it becomes normalized. And that guilt will just melt away. <laughs> just gone. Just gone. I know matter is not created or destroyed, but you can destroy guilt. <laughs> you can. Guilt is not matter. You can destroy guilt. <laughs> yes, by normalizing it. By making sure you have people in your life who do that thing too. Bye. See you later. Janae says, have a wonderful day. She's heading out to a brunch with friends. All right. This is how you prioritize these relationships. Thank you very much, Janae. Have a wonderful day. Okay. All right. Yes. Indigo Ocean, intuitive coach. For me, it used to be creating an online course. I spent I could spend six hours creating something that would earn me tens of thousands of dollars. That's right. This is a new day. Infopreneurship is real. We had a session on it in Exodus Summit. Exodus Summit is a virtual summit for black women who want to plan their sabbatical or their move abroad or their digital nomad life. And in Exodus Summit 2022, our theme was move abroad money. And we worked on, we brought in teachers, speakers to teach you how to make the money to live your dreams. One of those sessions, more than one of those sessions, was on infopreneurship, how to take what you know, right, put it on the internet for people to pay you for it, right? Uh, and that's what this is, right? So I told you in my introduction, I said, I'm Stephanie Perry. I'm the creator of House Sitter School. House Sitter School is an information product. House Sitter School is me saying, I know how to get house sits. And, I know, and the house sits give me free accommodation all over the world. If you want it to, get House Sitter School. 
House Sitter School is an information product. It's a series of videos that probably took me less than six hours to actually make, but longer to, you know, to learn the skill. <laughs> I had to book a lot of house sits to learn some stuff first. Uh, but yes, right? Information products, a thing that you can create that can make you money over the long run. Um, we focus a lot on creating, investing, on investing in terms of like real estate, but you can invest in your own, no your own knowledge and skills are an investment if you create something. If you create a thing, it could make you as much profit as a house or more. House Sitter School makes me, well, House Sitter School plus my trusted House Sitter's affiliate link, those two combined make me $2,000 to $2,500 every month, every month. Without having a, without having a, um, uh, without being a landlord, right? <laughs> um, I'm supposed to be giving you the link to Exodus Summit. So even though Exodus Summit did happen in um, October, you can still get the replays to Exodus Summit at ExodusSummit.com. So, yes, to infopreneurship, right? Is there a thing that you can do over this? these blocks of time that can make you money forever. That's why I'm writing a book, right? It's why I'm writing a book. There, what you already know, what's already in your brain, could be an amazing like, money generator for you, right? Jean says, that's what I need to learn, how to monetize my information. We teach that. <laughs> I teach it. I don't just do it. I teach it. So if you went to Exodus Summit 2022, rewatch some of those sessions. If you still have the replays because you have the all access pass, rewatch the sessions that were interesting to you. OK, Rashida and I host the Get Your Next Three Clients Challenge. We had one spot open, le one spot left at ExodusSummit.com slash challenge. If you're already trying to make money from your knowledge, but it's just not happening, join us in the Get Your Next Three Clients Challenge. In the challenge, we teach you how to pitch, I'm gonna say the P word, it scares people, how to pitch yourself to the right people, to the right audiences, to get clients for your product or your service. That's at exodusummit.com slash next three clients. The Get Your Next Three Clients Challenge starts tomorrow you can get some information if you go to our website, exodussummit.com slash next three clients. Okay, how are we doing? All right, so we're still on step three. Yeah, we're on step three, we're doing okay. All right, so valuing time over money is the answer. Valuing money over time is a losing proposition. The, one of the speakers at the conference that I went to last month, ROI Summit, he said, when you, the reason that people who work a traditional job, right, there's a difference, he said, there's a difference between somebody like me who makes money without having a job and somebody who has a job to make money. If there's a difference in the way that we view the cost of things. Here's what he said. This is not my words, okay? But I've been thinking over it. I don't know that I fully agree, but here's what he said. He said that when you work a job for money, all money becomes, um, it feels like you're paying for it with your life. His name is Myron Golden. Because you're, you're earning the money with your life, and then you're paying for things with your life. However, because I... <laughs> I make money out of my brain, right? <laughs> my, I make money from things that I've created that I, right, that I created a long time ago. House Sitter School started in 2019 or early 2020. Um, I instead think about money in terms of, well, what can I, how can I generate it? Or what, how can I create it? What do I already know that can make that money? And so it's less, it's, it feels less significant, right? It's why when she said, do you want to register for this conference, before she even announced any speakers, I said, sure. 20, I think I paid $2,500 because I was early bird. I paid $2,500 because I know 
how to make $2,500 without sacrificing my life, right? Without time commitment. $2,500 to me, a couple YouTube videos and a newsletter email, right? So I don't know, but, but, uh, but having said that, everything requires time, but that's what he said, okay? He said that when we have a job, we think about the Okay, Cheryl, just took the last spot. Welcome. When we think about paying for things, if your money source is a job, then when you think about paying for things, it feels like you're paying with your life, especially for significant amounts. It feels like you're paying with your life instead of feeling like, you know, oh, I, I have the ability to make that. I mean, can make it back, right? The other day I was thinking about leaving this Airbnb because I'm not crazy about it but I didn't have the mental energy to do it, to actually leave it. But I was thinking about leaving it and there's no refund. And so it would be, I would be out the $1,800 that I paid for the month. And what did I do? I sat down and wrote three ways to make $1,800, <laughs> right? Okay, if I'm about to lose $1,800, let's find three ways to make $1,800, right? I ended up not leaving, but that's the, there's a, there is a difference between Stephanie, the pharmacy technician, who worked for $22 an hour. And I, I, mean, like, I really did. Like, when I remember my heater went down, my heater died in my house. And the man came. I used to, I, at the time I was a runner, and there was this company that always sponsored the runs, the 5Ks, the 10Ks, the half marathon, the marathon. So I had a magnet on my refrigerator. I called that company. The man came, right? Your heater is gone, Miss Perry. Here's what's going to cost you. Instead of giving me a dollar figure, that man gave me a monthly payment that was more than a car payment. It was like $400 a month. I freaked out. I was like, mm-mm, mm-mm. I will stay in this house in Wilmington, Delaware and freeze. <laughs> I, will buy, I will buy 12 space heaters before I will pay $400 a month for a heater. I was like, what? That, it felt like <laughs> that man was robbing me of my life. Now, the price he gave me, exorbitant. I think my dad put in a new heater for $2,000, which of course I didn't have the money even to pay him for that, right? But I think my dad put a new heater in my house for $2,000. But that man gave me a figure that was more like $8,000. Like $400 a month for however, 24 months or something like that? I was shook. <laughs> I was shook. Right? Because there was a, because yes, right? Yes to baby girl H2O. Yes, because there was a ceiling on how much money I could make. I can only, even with overtime, I can only make so much money. Right? There was a real ceiling to how much I could make. Definite ceiling to how much I had. And then this man, he was sitting at my kitchen, my dining room table like it was nothing. Like, you see my house. You know I don't have no $400 a month for 24 months to pay for a heater. Um, I'm not saying today I still wouldn't be like, get out, <laughs> right? Especially now that I know, now that my dad went to the place and did it for $2,000. But um, hello, neighbor. Hello. Yes, I lived in Wilmington. I lived on, I lived near, um, not too far from uh, P.S. DuPont Elementary School. Um, yeah, like, but now money is very different. Now I want the time. I want the time. Give, give me the time any day. You can have the money. I want the time, right? So there is a change, but I'm not sure who I'm. Oh. <laughs> wow, Terry. Terry lived in Alaska. Met a guy on Tinder who replaced my water heater for free. That's amazing. <laughs> Tinder success. That's a Tinder win, girl. That's a Tinder win. <laughs> the win of all wins. <laughs> the win of all wins. Right, Aileen. So, no, you're, we're on the same track here. Aileen says you, they do have a point, but if you enjoy what you do in your own business, the feeling isn't the same as slaving away for someone else. That's right. It's different. When I was a credit analyst for Barclays Bank, <laughs> right, there's a different, a different feeling between waking up to go be a credit analyst at Barclays and 
helping black women take sabbaticals, right? <laughs> Very different feeling, right? Yeah, so, the, so I, I did see, what was his name? What was his name? Who asked the question? Janice, hi Janice, his name is Myron Golden. He has a YouTube channel and he does YouTube videos. He's very Bible-based, which some people won't enjoy, right? He's very Bible-preachy, very preachy. But I did, but at the conference, he spoke less bible -y and more just like, let me talk to you as a business owner, business owner to business owner. And I really did enjoy his sessions. When, you know, men, you know, I don't, sometimes I don't want to hear what a man has to say, right? <laughs> Sometimes I do. I did not go to this conference to hear what a man has to say. This is a conference by women for women. But he was very, his sessions were very good. He did two sessions at the conference. Okay, yes. All right. So paying with things with your time instead of your money is a way that we're not embracing ease. Valuing the money over the time, wrong. I uh, wrong. I, all I can say is wrong answer. If you value the money over the time, wrong answer. Time is not replaceable. Money is replaceable. Money is in abundance. Money is in abundance. Time is not in abundance. Even for somebody like me who's going to live to 120 years old, even for me, time is not in abundance. All right. Yes, I'm going to live to be 120. <laughs> I don't see why not. My grandparents lived to be in their 90s, and that was they were born in 190 something, right? I don't see why somebody born in 1974 can't live to be 120. I don't see why not. But I do need to stop eating Cap'n Crunch for dinner. Off topic. All right. Oh, another way that we value money over time. Let's see. Oh, ha, ha, ha. I'm reading my notes. <laughs> when you value all of the years you've put into something, as opposed to what that thing is giving you, also you're valuing the money over the, you're, you're devaluing time. Now, I don't know. Let me, this should be a separate point, but I got it in the subcategory for this point. What am I saying? Valuing all these years at a toxic job or in a relationship that's no longer serving you or in a country that frankly hates you, right? Valuing all the years you've put into it over the, what you're getting out of it, this is a separate point, but it, I forgot to put it to make it as a separate point. Uh, as opposed to valuing what you're getting out of it, also a losing proposition, right? The people who say, black women, y'all can't leave the United States. We built this country. We got to stay and get what's ours. What is that? <laughs> what, exactly, <laughs> what exactly do you expect to get? And is it more valuable than your peace of mind? Is it more valuable than your safety? Is it more valuable than your life? Some people are paying with their lives living in the United States. That's a separate point, but I don't know. I grouped them together. Okay, so yeah, we're not going, we're going to make sure that what we value is the thing that actually has value, right? We want to value the thing that has value. I saw my order on your IG reel. I saw my order. Oh, from the t-shirts on Instagram. I did a screenshot of the Instagram of the orders that were coming into the sh my merch shop. This shirt. So I didn't even tell you how to order the shirt. I have um, shirts like Boycott Winter, like These Jobs Ain't Loyal, and like This T-shirt Gives Black Women a Break. Um, on my merch shop, I said shirts, but there are t-shirts, there are sweatshirts, there are mugs, there are stickers, there are tote bags. Every design comes in those designs. Every design comes in those products. T-shirt, sweatshirt, mug, tote bag, stickers. So these are at Stephanie Perry dot my dot com. I don't know. Did I get it right? We'll see. Somebody will tell us. Okay, somebody will tell us, right? <laughs> myspreadshop.com, stephanieperry.myspreadshop.com. Or some of you will see it here on the screen in the um, underneath on YouTube. For some people, the merch shelf shows up under the video. I don't see it because I'm out of the country. Um, and then so, if not, if you go to just the channel, go to my main channel page, you'll see it, a, a shop button there. Um, for the month of February, we're putting money together to send 
Lisa, who might be here, Lisa, to reclaim the retreat in El Salvador in March. We're sending Lisa, we're sending a black woman on a retreat. We're paying for her ticket to go to a retreat. Uh, maybe one day we can talk to Lisa. <laughs> that might be helpful. Uh, we're paying for Lisa to go on a retreat. So all of the prof profits from the merch for February goes to that fund. And we have some special Reclaim merch that's available February only. So if you go to stephanieperry.myspreadshop.com, you'll see the Re Reclaim merch that is available only in February. And you'll see these others. Uh, which this is the one that I have. My, this t-shirt gives black women a break. This, uh, the t-shirt and the sweatshirt both say, this t-shirt or this sweatshirt gives black women a break. This one actually may not come in the mug yet. I need to make one that says, this mug gives black women a break. Okay, thanks, Janella. All right, yeah, we're putting together 3,250 to send her on this. I think three, it might be 3,400, somewhere thereabouts, <laughs> to send her on this sabbatical. Um, the Patreon money for February, the Super Chat money for February, which I believe I saw and I did not acknowledge. Super Chat money for February. And um, of course, the money that y'all just cash at me <laughs> at regular intervals, that also is going to the, to the um, sabbatical fund to center to this retreat. All right. Happy Girl Alaska. Thanks, Terry. Thanks very much. I, hope you, I think you said you're leaving, right? So... Sorry, I didn't acknowledge this while you're here. I'm sorry. But thank you very much for that super chat. Super chat money for February, also going to the Vicarian Sabbatical Fund. All right. Let's get back to where we were. Scroll, scroll. Okay, yeah. So leaving, staying in a place that's toxic, just because you've been there for years, you're totally devaluing time. That's not how time works. Okay. So leave. <laughs> If all you have is all these years, remember that from Love Jones? If all you have is all these years, go. All right? Go. Okay. Let me get my notes. So that was number three, valuing money over time. Number four, the fourth way that we're embracing struggle, right? The fourth way that we're sabotaging ease is by treating everything as urgent. This is a response to trauma. I think this is a PS, P, I'm not a therapist. I'm not a therapist. I'm not a counselor. I'm not a trained mental health professional, okay? But I think I heard, I read, somebody said that that is a response to trauma, right? Not being able to differentiate urgencies, things that are actual urgent situations from just everyday situations, from things that can be put on the back burner, not being able to make those distinctions that's PTSD, right? That is a result of trauma. Um, continuing that once you know it and not working to fix this problem, right? That is the actual sabotage of your own ease. It's okay. We can diagnose, we, we can diagnose some things, right? You, we're good at saying, I do this because. I went on a date one time years ago, and he said, my mother stole. He had played in the NFL for one year, right? Got that rookie contract. His mother stole his money. He said to me, I played in the NFL one year, my mother stole my money, and now I don't trust women with money, right? I'm like, if you can say that as an adult, he was an adult by then, right? If you can say that as an adult, you can fix it, right? <laughs> if you can diagnose the problem, you can work on repairing the problem. This goes back to one of the first points, right? Like, or the, or the staying in the label, your identity, right? Creating an identity around a restrictive label. But so if you can say to someone, I, you know what, I don't have, a, I'm not good at distinguishing between what's urgent and what's not urgent. It's because of the way my childhood, PTSD, whatever, right? If you can, if you can say that, but you're not working to fix it, if you're not working on it in any way, you're choosing the struggle. You're choosing the struggle. You're rejecting ease. So being, not being able to distinguish between what's urgent and what's important but not urgent and what's neither important or urgent, right? That's a thing that I see with black women, right? I have a couple email accounts where y'all email me stuff. I'm like, child, take it down. Stop, stop all capsing me about this thing. <laughs> that whether I reply to you today or in three weeks, it won't make a difference to you, right? 
it's not urgent. It's not urgent. And I'm not going to treat it like it's urgent. I don't live in the United States anymore. <laughs> I don't really live anywhere yet. I kind of live. Do I live in Costa Rica? I don't have residency, so I don't technically live in Costa Rica yet. But I don't live in the United States anymore. I'm not going to operate as though everything is urgent. Leaving the United States it will be is a quick lesson in that. It's a quick lesson. As soon as you leave the U.S., <laughs> other, other people will teach you. <laughs> they will teach you how wrong you are treating every situation as urgent. It's not urgent. Take it down. Sometimes I'll, be, I'll say that. In the con you listen, take it down, okay? Take it down. This is not urgent. All right? Stop all capsing me. <laughs> in the email, in the comments, in my videos, that's not urgent. Don't all caps me. <laughs> Levon says, I struggle with this a bit. When, when you recognize it, right, now, now you have a responsibility to work on it. It really will make your life better. When you can prioritize things, I mean, what a wonderful skill to have, right? What a wonderful tool to have in your toolkit to be able to prioritize things. Because if you're instead choosing to live your life like everything is urgent, you're keeping yourself in fight or flight mode, heart attack city. I mean, you're putting yourself on heart attack track. I don't want that for you. I don't want that for me. If I ever have a heart attack, it's not going to be because I'm stressed out. It might be because of my diet. <laughs> okay? But it's not going to be because every, I treat everything like it's urgent. I hope that Tosh... We haven't talked about Tosh last week. <sighs> Didn't Tosh do a wonderful job last week? Guest hosting for me. I was in the air. I was flying from Miami to here, to Costa Rica. Tosh came in and she talked about pleasure. She talked about prioritizing pleasure, in particular, pleasure, your own physical pleasure, your own body, self-pleasure, sex. If you can di diagnose yourself as, though you, as, as if you need some help, Tosh gave you some help last week. Go back and watch Tosh's video, which is called, something about pleasure, <laughs> it's called, Reclaim, Black women reclaim pleasure, right? She gave you a step last week, or some steps. Go back and watch it. <laughs> Go back and watch. If that's your struggle, Tosh gave you some help last week, <laughs> right? Didn't she do a great job? I got to hear parts of it on the airplane. As you know, there's not a whole lot of hospitality in the hospitality industry, so I paid for Wi-Fi. I had some Wi-Fi on the plane. So I heard some, I heard the, mostly the beginning and the end of her live stream last week. But didn't she do a good job? Uh, use that video for your own pleasure, right? Use, use the information that Tosh gave you to reprioritize, reprioritize some things in your life. <laughs> Right? She is a bright star. Doesn't she just sparkle? She is a very sparkly person without any adornment. <laughs> I only saw her on a screen this big, but I don't think she had any adornment. But doesn't she just sparkle? She just sparkles. What a wonderful person. Tosh first came on this channel to talk about decluttering as a way to make space for things in your life. Her video is right here on my channel, and it's called Black Women Reclaim Pleasure with Tosh Patterson. Uh, yeah, and it was just last Saturday. Just last Saturday. Let me get the let me get the link for you. Uh, just last Saturday, she talked about a variety. She, what, this video wasn't all about sexual pleasure, but it was in part. But it was all about your I don't embracing pleasure. I don't know any other way to put it. Embla embracing the pleasures of life, which include physical pleasure. We did a, I'm about to link to the wrong thing. We did a quick um, live stream together for two minutes where we shared, where we just announced that she was doing this. View on YouTube. Stop. I don't want to view. I want to copy the link. Copy link. 
get shareable link. This is the video, Black Women Unapologetically Reclaim Pleasure. I don't know why I decided to type the title out. I'm just going to put, because I don't think I can spell unapologetically again. L-E-A-S-U-R-E. Okay, this is the video. All right, we did it. All right. Yes, right? <laughs> Tara, pay someone to do things for you. Which Tara's, in a nutshell, here's what Tara says. Here's what Tara says about this video. Pay someone to do things for you so you have more time for pleasure and cuddles and massages. Done. Okay, more time. <laughs> more time. You're welcome, Levon. You're welcome. Okay, so what step are we on? Treating everything as urgent. Okay, so if you're a person who treats things as urgent, if you can recognize that in yourself, you can work on it, all right? We're not just going to recognize and label ourselves and box ourselves in. It's one thing to say, I have PTSD and I, because of from X situation or I was raised in X environment and blah, and et cetera, et cetera. And so that's why I do X, Y, Z. Don't stop there. Please don't stop there. Don't stop there. You can work on it. <laughs> That's what a therapist does. That's what therapists do for you. You can work on these things. You don't have to box yourself into, That's why I do this, because I, right? Especially if that, that this is not serving you, right? I'm telling you, treating everything as urgent is not serving you. It's giving you a heart attack, okay? It's going to give you a heart attack. Chill out. <laughs> I'd be like, lady, if you don't chill out. <laughs> women do sometimes come to me with urgent situations, right? Some women have some, some, some urgent situation. But most of the time, I'm like, lady, <laughs> if you don't chill out. <laughs> yeah, right? I'm looking for a comment that I lost. Okay, I lost it. Okay, but you do say you guys do say that Tosh did a great job. I'm glad. Okay, okay, yeah, go back and watch it. Yeah, Tosh has a retreat called Black Goddess Retreat. I think Black Goddess Retreat coming up the end of the year in Bali. So she did talk about that in the video as well. So if you're looking for a way to treat yourself, right? If you're looking for a way to prioritize you sometime this year, watch the video. You'll hear Tosh talk about the, um, the retreat in the video as well. Yes, Sustainable Steph says, Tosh was fantastic. I deleted 10,000 emails because of her. She made us score ourselves. The video was not all about sex, I wanna say this. She made us score ourselves on different parts of our lives and I got too many reds for my liking. <laughs> I got too many red red flags from my liking, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Urgency though. Okay. If you cannot, I want to say this one more time. If you know, if you're seeing that you're not able to, to uh, uh, properly identify urgent situations from non-urgent situations and you're treating everything like it's urgent, fix it. That's a killer. It's a literal killer. That's a literal killer. Living your life in fight or flight mode is a literal killer. You're literally pouring the things into your body that will kill you, <laughs> right? I'm laughing, but it's not funny. Uh, sometimes I think I'm so clever, right? I'll be like, girl, you are hilarious. But, right, you're literally pouring the things in. You're signaling for your body to go into fight or flight mode at all times. And that's a killer. That's stress. Stress is a killer. It'll kill you. It will kill you, okay? These are things that we, if you recognize it, you can fix it. You can work on it. And a therapist would love to do that with you. Ursula, what do I think of be intentional? I love it. Think about what you're doing. We live a lot of our lives kind of in robot mode or in like habit mode, habit. And this is not me. This is science, right? Most of what we do during the day is out of habit. Uh, but we don't stop to think about, does this habit serve me? Is this habit taking me where I want to go? Do I even know where I want to go in my life? Do I have a dream for myself or a plan for myself? 
I love the idea of us being more intentional about what we do. Big and small, small things, right? The body keeps the score. That's right, Melanie. That's right. And this is the only body we get, far as I know. If I'm going to make it to 120, <laughs> I can't afford to be stressed. And I can't afford to have y'all stressing me out. Y'all not going to be stressing me out in, the, <laughs> in, the, in my email. <laughs> Don't all caps me. <laughs> I'll say that. I will actually say that out loud. I have replied every now and then, in the, especially on YouTube. I have replied every now and then. So don't all caps me. <laughs> you need to chill out, okay? You need to chill out, Yeah, right. So back to intentionality. Yes, we do live a good portion of our lives on autopilot, right? Um, I think that's a mistake because as we've said, time is not in abundance. I mean, I'm going to get a lot of time. I'm going to get my 120 years. I'm going to get a lot of time. But still, there's a, only a, there's a finite amount of time for all of us. And so, yeah, I want to be more intentional about a lot of things. We've talked about this over the last few weeks. Since, since December, we've been talking about the things that I want for myself coming, going forward and how am I going to get them. And I'm not going to get them by, without being intentional about the things that I do, big and small. I'm down with it. I'm down with it. I want black women to live the life of their dreams. I want black women to live our dreams. That's not going to happen by accident. It's not going to happen by happenstance. It's going to happen from us intentionally going after the things that we want. Big and small, even if it means going after rest, right? Going after nothing, having nothing on my, I'm, I'm going to do what I got to do to go after the rest. <laughs> I'm going to get after it. Oh, Y'all want a t-shirt? Maybe we'll make that our March t-shirt. <laughs> I'll be like, don't all caps me. Don't. <laughs> You're not going to force me to make this an urgent situation when it's not an urgent situation. I'm so glad Jules said Tosh was a great choice for a channel takeover. I, I agree, I agree. She was like, oh, thank you for thinking of me. I'm like, girl, <laughs> who else, right? Who else? I've had a lot of repeat guests on my YouTube channel, uh, but Tosh is just a shining star. I don't know how else to say it. She's a shining star. She's a bright light. <laughs> yes. Good. I'm so glad that you guys, thank, thank you. I guess I should have done this. Thank you very much for being so, uh, such good, such, so hospitable to Tosh. Thank you very much for that. I wasn't here. I wasn't worried. I did bring Clarice in to moderate. So thank you, Clarice, for moderating. But it wasn't because I was worried about how you guys would treat Tosh. Okay. It's just because, you know, sometimes you get the nude webcam, live girls, you know, those people jump in the chat. So I had a moderator here. And so that Tosh wouldn't have to worry about dropping her own links when she talked about her retreat and stuff. I wanted Clarice here to help with that. Um, because it's hard to navigate all of this when you're brand new. She doesn't do a whole lot of live streaming on her own YouTube channel. So anyway, thank you. What I'm saying is thank you very much for being such a hospitable community, such a place where I don't have to worry. I didn't have to worry about Tosh, right? I know Tosh knows what she's talking about. And I knew that you were going to take good care of her. So thank you for taking good care of her. I appreciate you so much. I'm so proud of this community. I don't know. I love it. I love it here. <laughs> so thank you very much for doing that and for making this a place where it was easy for me to be like, hey, girl, I know some people who would love to hear you talk. <laughs> and me not knowing that I wasn't even going to be here. And knowing that Tosh was well taken care of. And everyone else in the chat also was well taken care of. So thank you for that. Okay. Treating everything as urgent was number four. The number fifth thing that we do that is an the antithesis of embracing ease, that is sabotaging our ease, is volunteering to lead things. I've seen, I've started to see a little turn in the tide. Um, Rashida and I had some meetups. No, the Exodus Summit community had some meetups in various parts of the United States and Mexico. Yeah, U.S. and Mexico recently. And no, and Portugal had a meetup. We had worldwide meetups, okay? Well, Rashida and I were not in attendance except for a couple. Um, but some people were like, let's do a meetup in this city. And then it was like, well, who's going to lead the meetup? I am very proud that for some cities, 
it took a while to get somebody to say, I'll, I'll plan it. Okay, I'm kind of proud of that because there was a time when everyone, somebody, no matter what city it is, there would have been 10 black women being like, I'll plan it. Right. I don't have time. I'm tired. I'm stressed out, but I'll plan this thing. Right. Instead, for some cities, it was like, who gonna plan it? I was in South Florida. Like, well, I'm here. I'm in Miami. So I guess I'll have to plan it. You know, I didn't want to do it. I was like, I, nobody else going to do it. I'm going to do it. Right. But I'm proud to say that I think there's a, turn, a tide turning and black women are like, somebody else can plan it. I'll be there, but somebody else can plan it. I'm very proud of that. <laughs> I'm very proud of each and every one of you who said, mm, not me. <laughs> Yesterday, Rashida and I went live in the community of women who are going to Marrakesh. We're doing a Marrakesh Morocco meetup in April. And there, so we have some things planned. And then our tour company said, if some women want to do some extra things like hot air ballooning, like taking a cooking class, they can get together and pick a time and come and let us know. So Rashida and I were like, anybody want to be in charge of getting a hot air ballooning group together? And nobody raised her hand. So we're a, we're a little proud of that. We are proud <laughs> because about six women were like, oh, I want to go hot air ballooning. And then we said, well, who wants to be the captain? Who wants to be the team captain who picks, who gets everybody together, organizes the date, and con communicates with the tour company? And y'all were like, now. So am I going to have to do it if it's going to get done? Okay, but it doesn't have to be you. It doesn't have to be you. If you're perfectly fine with it not getting done, <laughs> it's okay for, to th for that too, right? Some stuff I'm like, you know what? I'm perfectly fine if nobody does this. I'm also perfectly fine if somebody else does this. I'll be there if somebody else plans it. I really like that about us. I think that there's something happening. There's something happening. Now, okay, I want to I want to go back. If you want these things to happen, somebody is going to have to be the captain, okay? And if you would rather be the captain than not go hot air ballooning, be the captain, okay? <laughs> but if you would if you do not have the bandwidth don't sign up. Volunteering for things is a uh, is the opposite of ease. Volunteering to lead things is the opposite of ease. If you don't want to, if you don't have the time and the space and the bandwidth, and you don't want to deal with it. Don't do it. Stop feeling obligated to lead things. You don't have to lead things, right? Uh uh. Get somebody else to do it. <laughs> That's that 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 um. There's a meme. That's a meme right now. Uh-uh. Get somebody else to do it. Uh, I think we've taken it to heart, and I love it. I love that for us. That's always been my thing. Oh, I'll never. Like, sometimes I'll be like, I am the ambassador of doing as little as possible. And then I'll be like, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm just a member. I'm not the president of the Do As Little As Possible Club. I'm just a pew member. <laughs> No, I'm not the president of the club. I'm just a pew member. Y'all not even going to see me in the meetings. <laughs> okay? So we don't volunteer to lead everything anymore. I've, I've seen a turn with that. Because if that would have been three years ago, black, everybody would have, oh, I'll be the captain. I'll do it. There's been a tide turning. <laughs> you can still give. You can still contribute. We talked about the Vicarian Sabbatical Fund, this community. Some of you don't know. We sent Maisha Francis her $25,000. Some of you don't know that. Noelle, actually, we sent Maisha Francis the money that she would accept. <laughs> Some of you don't know that. We, sent my, we raised $25,000 through the t-shirts, through the Patreon community. I'm really not doing a good job of updating you on things. Some of you don't know. Maisha Francis got her money, right? Maisha Francis, a New Orleans artist, and teacher is now in Rwanda. She was already in Rwanda. She didn't wait on us, okay? She was like, I'm getting there. But she is in Rwanda with the money we raised for her to take her sabbatical. There are ways to do things without being the captain, without being the leader, without taking the lead. Yes, right? I mean, I mean. <laughs> What a wonderful thing we did without anybody having to be exhausted and tired. 
I threw up a couple shirts. I created a Patreon community that hardly sees me. I created a Patreon community without promising all the world. I didn't promise you the world. I said, if you want to give money, here's where you give money. Patreon or merch or Cash App or Super Chat. That's how we give money to this fund, right? But you're not going to see me on Patreon, uh, over in the Patreon community every day doing behind the scenes and special this and preview that. No, indeed. I'm not doing that. I think we've turned a, t a corner. <laughs> I think we've turned a corner, a standby member. <laughs> I think we've turned a corner in volunteering to lead things. I've noticed this. The last few times we've asked who wants to do, it might be particularly in our community because we have a group of women who have intentionally left the struggle behind, right? Who are intentionally embracing ease. So it may be, I may have a, the, 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 the pool of women, I may have a very particular pool of women who I've noticed a change in. I don't know, maybe, maybe in your churches and your communities, you're not seeing this yet. But I've seen a turn. We've turned the corner on this. <laughs> yeah. Right? Okay, good and grown. I love that because we've been conditioned to believe we're slackers if we don't step up to lead things. What we are is people who are going to live longer. <laughs> If you don't step up to lead things, what you are is people who are going to get a full night's sleep, rest, live longer, spend time in the, in, with the, forming relationships with the people you want to form relationships with, friendships that will feed you, family relationships that will feed you. That's what we are when we don't volunteer to lead things. We are whole people. When we don't volunteer to be the leader of a thing, <clears throat> we get to be a whole person who lives a whole life. Maybe a hobby. <laughs> we might get to have experienced a hobby. We might get to do things for fun when we don't step up to lead the thing. There is a pack, whore, pack mule, pack mule expectation placed on black women. The expectation is that we are going to carry the load. <clears throat> you can reject that. I did. We reject it over here. We're not your workhorses, <clears throat> and we're not, uh, there's no shame, and there's no apology. Without apology, we're not doing it, all right? Yeah, that's, what, that's how we do things over here. I know, I don't think I really have, we haven't celebrated this. One day we'll get Maisha over on the channel. I don't want to bother her. I, want, I don't want her to feel like she had to work for money, so I don't want to bother her, but I would love to talk to her again. <laughs> I would love to talk to her again. She did have me give some of the money to some other people. She did have me spread the money around a little bit, but she took, but she did let us, she did let us give her a good chunk of change. Okay. <laughs> she did let us give her a good chunk of change. And uh, she's in, in Kigali, Rwanda, making art. I think she's also teaching a little bit and, and communing with other artists. Good question, my MySpace, how do you apply to be the next person? I'm not ready to decide that yet. Um, we are so, then we've already decided the next next person is Lisa, who's being sent to a retreat with our money. We're sending Lisa on retreat, on Reclaim the Retreat. We're paying for her ticket. I'm saying that in the hardest possible way. We're paying for Lisa's ticket to reclaim the retreat. So she's the next person. Now, the next person who's going to get a big chunk of change, I don't know. The Patreon community will need to pick a time to get together to talk about it. I haven't put any of that on my calendar. So I'll say before February is over, we will decide what the next, who, how we'll pick the next, who the next person will be and how we'll pick her. Will it be a creator again? First time I wanted an artist or creator because I love artists, right? And there's no ceiling. And we get to take all the credit in the future for everything Maisha does from here on. <laughs> Every work of art Maisha makes for the rest of her life, we get to take some credit for her. <laughs> Every win. She already has work in the Smithsonian, but. Every win from here on, we get to take some credit. So what, but what, will, will we do that again? Will we do something different? We'll get together as a community, the Patreon gang. We'll get together as a community and decide that before February is over. Yeah. 
So I don't have an answer yet, but you'll know. I'll, I'll, I'll announce it. Okay, but we did a wonderful thing without anybody getting exhausted. I did get a little frustrated with some t-shirt designs, but that was unnecessary because then I went back to what I know, <laughs> right? No design, just words <laughs> without anybody saying, oh, I'll do it, I'll, right? We did have some captains, fundraising captains, who I, I did promise them something and I need to go back and see what I promised them. But you can contribute to things, right, without being the leader of things. I hope you learned that. Take some credit for what you did. Every single cash app, every single super chat, every single t-shirt purchased, uh, every single Patreon, patron money, dollar, every single one of those contributed to that pot. And I don't think anybody got tired. <laughs> anybody got worn out. Nobody had to do this and do that and arrange this and arrange that. Now, Stella, I stopped volunteering and now I have no tribe. Now I value, value me and validate me. The thing is, right, if you are the one holding it all together, when you step away, is it going to fall apart? And will you need to find a new tribe? So Stella, I hope that you find the people who are willing to put in effort to be on your team, right, in your tribe. Find the people who are willing to put in the effort. If what you found, if the way I'm interpreting this is that when you stopped being the person who did all the, all the things, people then disappeared, right? Didn't value you except for, for what you could do for them. If that's the case, you just need to find the right people. They're out here. They're here. <laughs> that we're out here, right? You find the people who value you for you and not for what you do for them. That's just, it's sad, but that's how a lot of things go for a lot of people. Once you decide you're not doing for them, doing these things for them, they decide, oh, well, that's the only value I saw in you, which is why you can't really earn value, right? You, either people value you or they don't. You, don't. you don't actually earn value. So all that hard work and struggling and straining and striving and stressing that you're doing to try to get people to value you, lost cause, friend. Losing game, they're never going to value. If they didn't value you when you did nothing for them, they're not going to value you because you do everything for them. That's not how value works, <laughs> okay? People who love you, value you, appreciate you. Appreciate you, not what you do, right? This is, what, this is a thing that men struggle with. This is one of the reasons that there are so many women who need a healing <laughs> before we can go out and date well. Because when men go on the internet and try to praise their woman, right? Oh, let's celebrate my wife today because, right? All they can think of is the things that she does for them. The only things they can think of in terms of who she is and who she is that's worthy of love and appreciation Right? The only things they can come up with are the things that she does for him. My wife, because she paid for me to go to dental school, and when my car broke down, she, did, she drove me to every class, and she, even though I cheated on her, she didn't leave. And, right? Instead of like, she's a kind and loving person, and <laughs> she is silly, and she, right? And st all they can think of when they think of a woman is what she does for them. That's not really valuing her. You're just valuing the work that she does and even that is undervalued, right? You don't really appreciate her. You appreciate what she does. Do you even know her? Do you even see her as a whole person? This is a different conversation, but it's, it's a real conversation. When you stop doing all of the things for people, right? you're going to lose some people who only saw you as the person who does the things for them. But you got to find the right ones. They're out there. They're out there, right? They're out there. You guys, right? <laughs> I think this is a good start, right? I, you know, they never, never, she's a wonderful person. Never, she, she loves video games and whatever, right? It's always, here's what she does for me. She wakes up at 4 a.m. to feed the kids and get them dressed so I don't have to do it. When the school calls, I don't even know, but the school never even calls me. 
because they know I'm clueless, right? <laughs> right? I, this, is, this is a major healing that women need before we can get out and date because men have traumatized the crap out of us. <laughs> because every time I see that, I'm like, who would date men? Who, who in this day and time would date men when they out here acting like this? He out here talking about, <laughs> I need a healing. Y'all know I want a yacht. And I think a, there's a good chance my yacht is going to come through a man with a yacht. But I need a healing because I can't date these men like this. <laughs> I, we're getting off topic. I can't date these men like this. I'm starting to get a headache. Uh, but there is value in you that is not at all tied to what you do. You are a person, and that is why you are valuable. Uh, that's how white men get to live their lives. White men get to live as valuable people, even if they can't do a damn thing. Take on some of that. <laughs> Understand that. <laughs> the only people, really, who are, have to earn, earn their way to value is black women. And even that never works. It never works. It never works. So stop trying. Give it up. Give it up. All right, give it up. I got a headache now. All right, I'm feeling better than I felt when we got started. I didn't know if this video was going to have to be 10 minutes when we got started. <laughs> I'm in my bag now. Okay? Volunteering to lead things is a way that we embrace the struggle instead of the ease. All right, number six, not having lazy friends is a way that you are embracing struggle over ease. Lazy friends will show you the way. Get you some lazy friends. Those same people who you used to be like, why don't she get up and whatever? Why don't she, right? Them same lazy friends can show you the way, right? I did all this work and all this effort and here she come, just sitting down at the table to eat. <laughs> I done made all this food. I done did all of this. It's dinner time. Here she comes sitting down to eat at the table. Take a lesson. Take a lesson from your lazy friends. Get you some lazy friends. We are great examples. <laughs> we are great examples on how to do as little as possible. Some of you, there's been too many, I'm going to say years, but too many generations of you having to do and do. Too many workhorse generations for you to ever be naturally inclined to do as little as possible. Okay? So get you some lazy friends. She will teach you. <laughs> Let her show you the way. Sarah says she's one, okay? <laughs> Sarah says, right, find you some lazy friends. Thank you. Kay says, I just needed to hang out with my people. Thank you, Kay. I appreciate that. Child, yeah, because when we started, I was like, this is going to be a 10-minute. <laughs> I hope I don't yell at these people. <laughs> That's all I was thinking. There's a, I was like, there's a good chance I will break out and cry at some point during the live stream, but I hope I don't yell at nobody in the live stream. <laughs> These hormones, I don't know. I don't know, child. I don't know. I don't know how people do it. I don't know how people do it. I have not. This has not been a good experience. <laughs> this has not been a good experience for me. Right? Lazy people, they will show you the way. Okay? Find you some. I'm so, so serious about it. Lexa Buckley, I do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not kidding, though. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Ask a lazy person. If you, if you have something that you're doing and you feel like, I'm doing a little too much, how can I do this a little easier? Ask a lazy person. She will show you the way. <laughs> right? <laughs> the lazy friend enjoys, Cheryl says, the lazy friend is enjoying the whole event. You tired and pissed off. Take a lesson. <laughs> Take some notes. Take some notes. <laughs> Take notes. She will show you the way. I'm so serious. I'm so serious about that. That person that you look at like, <sighs> befriend her. <laughs> or at least let her be your, your mentor on the down low, on the secret. Let her be your mentor. She knows something you don't know, that there is no win 
and being the stressed out one. <laughs> global, gr global granny, I'm still in my PJs. Retirement is a wonderful way to become lazy. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right, Star Child says she's the lazy friend. Lean on me. Learn from me, grasshopper. <laughs> right? Find her. Professor LCH, I'm the lazy friend and family member when it comes to big family events. That's right. Yeah. I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Work smarter, not harder. Okay. I don't have much more for that. Where do you find lazy friends? What I wrote. Where do you find lazy friends? I don't know. Maybe at retreats. <laughs> Go to a retreat. We know a couple different women here who are planning retreats. Go to a retreat. Maybe you'll find a lazy woman there because we, lazy women also like to treat themselves, right? They like good stuff <laughs> without a lot of hard work. So maybe at retreats, go to some Exodus Summit meetups. You're going to meet some women, some of, some of whom are new to lazy, some of whom are just, you know, dipping a toe in lazy for now, some who have jumped in the pool, right? Maybe go, just go to some events where you see a different type of woman, women who are not going to struggle and stress and strain their way to an early grave. <laughs> Alexa Buckley, I'm bringing a dessert, dessert and wine. Okay, that's good. I think that's perfectly acceptable. A divine artist, stop doing all the things for people. That's right. Struggling, straining, stressing, striving. You cannot earn value. I can't tell you this enough. Seriously. This is one of the first, not, maybe not one of the first tweets, but one of the first, yeah, one of my first tweets, right? You, you cannot earn your way to value. And only black women are told that we're supposed to. You cannot earn your way to value. The value is in you. Okay, look back to the, so a divine artist, the value in you is not tied to what you do. Give it up. You, the value is you, not what you do. Somebody still don't believe me. Okay, I hear you, right? Somebody still don't believe me. This is why when we start talking about things, I'm like, I don't care about your life's purpose because that's about what you do for other people. I don't care about those things. I don't care about what you do for other people. I want you to live your dreams. That striving and straining, those letters after your name, all of that, right? And people still don't treat you with value. People still don't treat you with respect. You cannot earn your way to value. Someone who doesn't value you is not going to value you because you do more. You cannot earn your way to value. You cannot. So stop. Stop trying. Quit. You cannot. I know. I hear you. You don't believe me still. <laughs> you think you have to do to be. You don't. You cannot earn your way to value. Terry, I used to get so upset with my baby sister for doing as little as possible. And now I'm like, teach me your ways. Mm -hmm. Befriend the lazy person. She happy. She glowing. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. Care girls trip therapy organizing a crowd fund, a yacht crowd fund. <laughs> okay. So I don't mean lazy as in, you know what I'm, I hope you understand what I'm saying. I'm saying the person who's going to do as little as possible, not the person who's going to do everything on level 10. Right now. I don't mean the person who's not going to reciprocate. I don't mean that. I hope you understand that. Y'all know what I mean. I mean my kind of lazy. Who's going to volunteer to lead the... Not me. <laughs> what you do today, Stephanie? I woke up. I took a nap. I made breakfast. I may have taken another nap. <laughs> okay? <laughs> also, can we get a lazy friend t-shirt? Y'all are making, putting a lot of demands on me. Yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> we'll get some new stuff out soon because we want to keep raising some money. The money, t-shirts are not the only way for you to give money in the sabbatical fund, but it's a fun way. T-shirts, merch is a fun way to get, get money into the sabbatical fund. Girl, them hormones. I can't, I, can't I can't explain to you how I thought I was losing my mind this week. 
I thought I was having a breakdown. And I'm like, but I don't really, can you have a breakdown when you don't really do anything? <laughs> I couldn't figure it, figure it out. Am I having a, it, can you have a breakdown when you haven't really done anything? <laughs> I could not figure it out. I couldn't. Francis was like, oh, perimenopause. I was like, girl, a word. <laughs> it took one word for everything to make sense to me. I don't feel good right now, but I don't feel bad about feeling bad. Earlier this week, I felt bad and I felt bad about feeling bad. You know, but now I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to find a way to fix it. I'm not going to stay here. I can't stay. I cannot have this week over and over again. I don't know how some people do it. Get some Magnolia. I don't, I need to Google. I didn't, haven't even gotten to the point yet to Google what I need to do, but I'm going to go, I'm going to go to a doctor and I'm going to do some natural stuff too. Um, yeah, I was like, what is this? And then I remembered years ago, I was on birth control for two months. The army convinced me, army doctor convinced me that I had polycystic ovaries when I didn't. And they put me on low estrogen. And for two months, and I remember feeling similar to that then, but I'd forgotten that feeling. I remember that back then. I had a boyfriend, he was like, you need to get off them pills. <laughs> he did the diagnosis. He was my Francis. <laughs> he was like, you need to get off them pills. <laughs> But that, it was a hormone. I didn't, I didn't know. Hormones make me bonkers. Hormone imbalance, I was losing it. I thought, I didn't know. I didn't know what it was. But you know what? Finally, when I opened up my mouth and said, something ain't right here. Uh, it only took a word <laughs> for a little bit of balance to be restored and for me to know the path forward. Now I know what I need to fix. I know what I need to get, what I need to get working on. It's really something, Right? When I say women are the best people, like imagine men having these kinds of experiences. The world would have been ended. <laughs> Nuclear war, disaster, strife. <laughs> world would have been ended if men had to deal with this. Because I'm telling you, I was not in a good place this week. <laughs> Ooh, this is different. This is perimenopause. This is a month. I never really had, we talked about this earlier. I never really had a monthly. I never had really had like PMS, but this, ooh, this perimenopause, it just washed over me in, a, in no time and just took over my life for a full week. Oh, Lord have mercy. I can't take it. I'm not, I promise you, I'm not a person who will go and address things very quickly in general because, you know, nothing is urgent. As we've said, this right here is urgent. It's is urgent. I can't live like this. I promise you, I can't live like this. I, can't, I, I have cried every three hours since Sunday. <laughs> I may have burned some friendships and some bridges <laughs> this week. <laughs> I can't live like this. I can't. Cheryl, a lot of my lazy friends are over 60, and honey, they can demonstrate the value of not raising your hand. Child, let them lead you. Let them lead you, right? Yes, let them lead you. Or they're not going to lead you. <laughs> You're going to have to just take notes. They're not going to lead you. <laughs> I dabble in lazy from time to time. It's dive in. Find some long periods of time. Dive in. Start a lazy woman accountability group. Who going to start it? <laughs> Who going to start it? Who going to set up the Zoom calls? Not the lazy friend. She's not setting up no Zoom call. You can send her the Zoom link and she'll show up if she feels like it. <laughs> yes, Rachel. I'm the queen of ease. And, I, and Rachel will chill in the river of ease often because of me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rachel. I, it's, a new, it's a new wind blowing. <laughs> it's a new wind blowing. Auntie Lou says perimenopause is kicking her butt. I have no energy to do anything and it makes me feel guilty. Once, once I was unofficially diagnosed, I felt less guilty, less, less bad. So I hope maybe like under, understanding is, you know, it's hormones. I, I got to take another nap because the hormones said I got to take another nap. Well, no, we don't feel guilty. Auntie Lou, we don't feel guilty about resting anyway. I'm getting all confused. Not having energy is not something to feel guilty about, right? That's a state, that's a state that you're in. 
as a state that can be repaired, fixed, but that's the state that you're in. I don't see why you would feel guilty about the state that you're in. All right. No and no thank you. The body, the body electric supplement. Put the words no and no thank you in your life. Mm -hmm. No is a complete sentence. The first time I heard that was from E.V. Robinson, who runs no, no Madness. She's the first person I ever saw write that out. I'm like, noted. Noted. And now sometimes when I ask people what things to do things, I start with no is a complete sentence, right? I'm going to ask you a question that has a yes or no answer. If your answer is no, that can be the end of it. No is a complete sentence. I will never forget that. <laughs> I will never forget it. All right, y'all, I'm telling you, the person who starts the Lazy Woman Accountability Group is a pretender. <laughs> she, or no, 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 no. She's just a student who needs some guidance. Okay, hi, Southern Rose Tia D. All right. Okay. So we talked, I think we hit six and number seven, chasing income streams. Okay. Seventh way you're not embracing ease is by chasing income streams. Okay. Money is in abundance. You can make money doing something that you enjoy doing, and then you can branch money off from there. Right. But you don't need to be in 80, 80 different businesses to make money, to live your dreams. Money is in abundance. When you're going after a million different income streams, you're saying you don't think there's enough money doing the thing that you're doing. And there is. I, told, I, sh I just showed you I have one YouTube video that's made me $25,000. Now, don't get it twisted. I have revenue sources. I have rivers of income that come to me, right? I have rivers of income, but they're all tied from one thing, house sitting. When you are, I have a whole video about this that's going to say it much better than I can today. I have a whole video on in, called Income Rivers for Black Women. Watch it. Income Rivers for Black Women. But all of, all of my money comes from me being a house sitter. All of my money as in, in like, I don't have a yacht, okay, <laughs> yet. But what I'm saying is I made $46,000 a year as a pharmacy technician my last year. I made $46,000 as a pharmacy technician. Not my last year, because I didn't work a full year. But you know what I'm saying. I made $22 an hour. My last hourly rate was $22 an hour. So $46,000 a year as a pharmacy technician. In, and the last year that I worked was 2015. Last year that I had a full job was 2015. Uh, in 2022, yes, 2022, I made over $250,000 with no job. Those income rivers are directly related to me being a house sitter, right? I'm not chasing money as a house sitter and a, uh, what are they called? Notary, right? I'm not a house sitter and I'm a notary. And I do, um, I sew, sew, or I sell jewelry and I do, right? It's good to sell jewelry. It's good to make and sell jewelry. Find income streams related to that, right? Stop chasing all these extra things because you don't think the money is in selling jewelry or you don't think the money is in house sitting and YouTubing. When you have to buffer your income like that, you're saying there's not enough. Instead, find the enough in your thing. So no, house sitting doesn't pay. House sitting, I get free accommodation. Most of my house sits don't pay me. I spend probably over, since the pandemic, I don't think I've been paid to house sit since the pandemic started. Before the pandemic, half my house sits did pay me. But since the pandemic started, I've lost some of those clients. Uh, in, a, in a fine, like they've gotten other house sitters, not like they died from the pandemic. I just mean that they've gotten other house sitters. Some of my regulars have moved on most of my house sits are unpaid, but still, Stephanie the house sitter made $250,000 in 2022 from house sitting, from coaching other people to be a house sitter, from having a YouTube channel that talks about house sitting, 
from having a virtual summit that talks about house sitting and moving abroad and sabbaticals. House sitter school, did I say house sitter school? From merch, that's not really, kind of related. It's related to house sitting in that I make the merch and I have a YouTube channel about house sitting, right? Um, chasing various streams of income without digging in and just getting a river, stress, and you're giving yourself the message that money can't come to you with ease. Money is in abundance. And you can make money with ease. If I can do it, I don't have any special skill that would make it easier for me to make money with ease than you. I don't have a special skill, except for being a person who likes talking. <laughs> that, that is it. I don't have a special skill that helps me parlay money into things. I have free time. I have clarity. I have some things that I'm really into. House sitting and travel and moving abroad and sabbaticals, I'm really into those things. And I have an audience who I really love serving. That's you. <laughs> Right. But I don't have any special. I didn't come in with a marketing background. Some of you have these things that would give you a real advantage. I didn't come into it with a marketing background. I didn't come into it with connections. Courtney had to introduce me and Rashida. And I don't even really know Courtney. She's just a woman who followed me on Instagram. Right. I didn't have connections. Didn't have a marketing background. I didn't have what else could be valuable that some of you might have. Or something else. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but what I did was I decided that I was going to focus on this thing. House sitting and career breaks was going to be my lane. I didn't try to serve everyone. And I didn't try to cover everything. I only talk to black women. There are other people here in this live stream who are not black women. I know y'all are here. Hello. <laughs> I know y'all are here. There's a, a good handful of men who tweet, out, who, uh, especially like Action VJ on Twitter. He'll be like, don't tell Rashida I watched your video. <laughs> I know you're here. But I got very clear on what I want to do and who I want to talk to. And I decided that I was going to go all in on that. I'm not saying you, can't, you don't buffer your income, right? I'm not saying quit your job and do this, right? It's, a, it's good to have another source of income when you're building something. OK, but what I'm saying is I'm not giving myself the message that, well, I know it's not going to work. So let me go ahead and get this license to be a notary. Let me get this notary license, even though notaries have to work in person and I don't want to live in the United States. Let me hem myself in a little bit just in case this doesn't work. This sounds really overly optimistic to some of you. I understand that. But to some of you, you're saying I'm actually hedging my bets when really I need to give myself the message that I can do this thing, that it'll work. If somebody's doing it, you can do it. Okay? All right. I'm really behind in the chat, so I'm just going to skip to where we are now, I think. Yes, money is in abundance to me. Money, money is in abundance. It might be being hoarded. Okay? I'm not saying it's in the, it's in the right hand. It's being hoarded. This sofa is getting uncomfortable. I done, I done sat a hole in the sofa. <laughs> I'm not saying money's not being hoarded. But what I'm saying is it is in abundance. If you need it to flow through you, if you need to circulate some money and get it, get it flowing through you, get it flowing. Latasha. Hi. Latasha says, I don't have a whole bunch of streams of income, but I'm having difficulty figuring out what specific thing to do. The There's a difference between doing something online and doing something with a physical product, I'll say that. But you're, if you already have some clients or some, if you do something that is a service, right, and you already have some clients, let them to tell you what the specific thing is. If, Latasha, you're known for, if people come to you for a thing, Right? This is not how everyone makes their money, but this is how I make money. If people come to you for a thing, let them tell you what they need and offer it for money. If you like it, if you enjoy it, 
right? Now, there'll, there'll be a day when I'm like, I'm done talking about house sitting. I'm moving on. That's not today. Okay, don't worry. But if, if you're, if, especially if we're talking about infopreneurship, what, pe let people tell you what the thing is that they need. Listen to what they're asking you for. Is that helpful to you at all? Sarah says, I want to become a notary. Okay, yeah, so you put on here remote notary. I've talked to notaries from a few different states who have hemmed themselves in because they can't get remote. I don't know which states, I don't know, right? Because that's the first thing I said in the calls. I'm like, oh, but notaries are doing this online now. And they're like, no, not in my state. Don't get yourself hemmed in to a life that doesn't serve you. If your life, if, if where you find peace and joy and happiness and pleasure is bopping around, being free, then make sure that your income can happen wherever you are. Don't tie yourself in to a location. Do I pay U.S. taxes as an expat? I sure do. <laughs> I'm still a resident of the state of Delaware. I pay, I pay federal and state taxes. Yes, indeed. They, Uncle Sam going to get his money. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, I don't know of a way for you American. I don't know of a way for Americans to not ever have to pay taxes or at least file taxes to the federal government except for um, severing, what is it called? The one thing that I would never do. The thing that Tina Turner did where you cut your ties with the U.S. I need my U.S. passport. It's still valuable. I can't, I can't, right? I can't, I need my U.S. passport. Terry, I would love to take a year off to focus on my channel. It's so fun creating content. It's fun, uh, and it can become a thing, right? It can become the income. Most of my, most of the people who have paid me for anything, a coaching program, a challenge, a summit, right, most have come from YouTube. So I, there's, it's no surprise that I teach YouTube, that I coach people on how to grow a business through a YouTube channel. Uh, there's nothing like it. There's no, there's no other platform that's going to move you forward in that way. If what you need is a, if what you need is to take some time off work to focus on this on your channel, how do you make that work? For me, it was coming up with a dollar figure. I knew I was going to do it. I was going to stop. I was going to bop around Southeast Asia. So for me, it was come up with a dollar figure and make that money. <laughs> right? It was pretty simple. I needed $14,400 to not work for one full year. So I saved $14,400 and I didn't work for a full year. That career break changed everything for me. I don't underestimate the power of a break, the power of having time in your adult life when you don't go to a job. It was transformative for me and for me, my friends, me and my homegirls me and the women in my community. So if this is what you want, I hope that you move yourself toward it. Do what you need to do. I, we got videos on this channel, video on Rashida's channel, videos on Adelia's channel, videos on Halisi's channel and Angela's channel, and right? Videos on these channels about how to do what we've done. I hope that you put some time and effort into doing it. Nothing changed my life so far like free time. Nothing. Nothing. Even having, so I have some wonderful privileges. I talked about privileges I don't have. I have, some, I have two parents who let me live, move into their house uh, with no real understandable plan. I had a kind of a plan. I, was, I knew I was going to start a YouTube channel and whatever. Kind of had a plan, but no, no plan that they understood. All right? I have privileges. Even they, even that privilege of being able to move into their house was even the, the sabbatical was even more helpful, as helpful as that was and is, continues to be, to have parents who won't let me flounder, <laughs> right? Uh, the sabbatical was more helpful because the sabbatical gave me clarity. The sabbatical gave me the belief that I could do things. I could do hard things. Saving that money and then traveling the world for years to places in Asia where I didn't speak the language and I didn't understand the food and I didn't get the culture and I didn't, everything was different and hard. That gave me the belief that I can do anything. 
That year changed my life. That year changed the entire trajectory of my life. And by extension, changed so many other Black women's lives. Anybody here have their life changed because I took a career break? Doesn't that sound ridiculous? But it's true. Anybody in here who, ever, who feels like I helped you with anything because I introduced you to house sitting, because I introduced you to the career break, because I told you about a town in Mexico and you visited it and you loved it, right? All of that is a direct result of me quitting my job for a year. Transformative. Nothing has changed my life like that. That's why I'm always gonna talk about the career break. One day I may get sick of house sitting. I may not talk about house sitting anymore one day, but I will always talk about the career break, particularly for black women because nothing changed my life more than that, and nothing changes other black women's lives more than taking a significant time in your adult life where you don't have a job, where you're the boss of you and not your job, where you can be anywhere, do as much or as little as you want. You can explore new things. You can reject a whole lot of old things. You can reinvent yourself if you want. You can reinvent yourself. I don't know why I'm pointing and <laughs> I really got, <laughs> I felt emotions, <laughs> right? My year off, my year off changed somebody's life, right? My year off changed some lives. Imagine what yours can do. Okay. <laughs> right? I know. I know. Right? I know. Imagine what yours can do. I hope you take it seriously. And uh, all of you, that's not only for Terry. I feel like I, I, you can, I don't know if you can tell. I was talking to all of you. I was, that wasn't just Terry. <laughs> that was not just for Happy Girl Alaska. That was for all of you. If that's what you want, I hope you go after it. Make it yours. I don't know that there's anything better you can do for yourself. I don't know. There might be, but I don't know it. I don't know that there's anything better you can do for yourself than take a whole bunch of time where you ain't got no job, where you get to discover you, real you, not worker you, not student you, not earn your value you, not striving you, not stress you, not burn out you, you. Find her. She's in there. She's in there. She's a break away, a sabbatical away, a retirement away. Some of y'all could just retire. <laughs> She's there. Find her. Okay. Okay. Let me drink some water and calm down. <laughs> My little vein is popping out. <laughs> but I mean it. I mean it. I'm, I mean it so, so sincerely. Nothing has done anything for me like that. Aging Aloud says, oh, Aging Aloud, Aging Aloud. Oh, that's beautiful. What a wonderful name. Reinvention currently underway. You can do it. I did it. You can do it. Okay? We are a work in progress. Oh, Raquel, I was in a dark place when YouTube sent you to me. Six months later, I have a new vision for my life. Wonderful, Raquel. Keep going. Wonderful. A vision for your life? There's nothing that compares. There's no money. I would not trade any money. I would not trade any amount of money or yacht for the vision that I now have for my life. I wouldn't trade a yacht. I would not trade a yacht for the vision I have now for my life. I don't really know. I, don't, I can't really explain what, that, what it does for me 
to know, to have a vision and to have seen myself taking action towards the vision. Having a vision and to be able to be like, I, I'm taking a step. I took a step, just a step. I took a step toward that vision. I wouldn't trade it for anything, anything. So Raquel, I, I listen, I'm, I read, I'm hearing, I see what you're saying, okay? I understand what you're saying. I take, I'm taking this to heart. <laughs> I'm taking this to heart. You having a new vision for your life six months later, that is a star in my crown, as my mom says. That's a win for me. That's why I do this. That's why I do this, right? <clears throat> okay. It ripples. It ripples. You living your life, you, we think, so going back to whatever number it was, you think you need to volunteer for things and be, number five, volunteering to lead things, right? We think that we need to do this, us, to do these things for other people in order for other people to be affected. You living your life in a way that you want, in a way that you desire, you living your dreams, it ripples out. It gives the next woman a per, some permission, maybe. I don't know. It gives the next woman a vision. It gives the next woman the, the idea that it's possible. It ripples out. You doing your thing for yourself is for the community. <laughs> it helps the community. It's not selfish. If I had never seen a black woman take a career break, would I have even known that it was possible? Now, the people who introduced me to a career break were some white kids, right? White dudes from San Diego. You know, you can just quit your job, travel, come back, get your job back, right? But then in the Nomadness Travel Tribe, which I've mentioned many times today, I saw black women who were traveling. If, if they weren't on career break, they were at least traveling long term. I saw that, and that's how I knew I could do it, right? So not only did my career break change your, your life, their travel their long-term travel, their career break changed my life. We don't have to sacrifice to make someone else's life better. Actually, the opposite of sacrifice, right? Embracing the ease and the flow can also ripple out significantly and improve someone else's life. I believe it. I believe it. It's another thing that's flowing through me. I talked about money flowing through me. Another thing that flows, flows through me is ease. <laughs> it flows through me. It's not just mine. It flows out. It flows through me. Right? So everybody, whatever your thing is, your thing doesn't have to be a career break or a move abroad. It could be something else, whatever your thing is. You not doing it doesn't only affect you negatively. It affects everybody you come in contact with when you're sour, you're Miss Sourpuss. <laughs> because you're not living your dreams, now you're walking around like a sourpuss or you're Eeyore, woe is me. That is rippling out as well. Is that the impact that you want? Is that your legacy? I hope not. I didn't want that to be my legacy. I'm so glad that's not. It was going to be <laughs> at, some, at one point, woe is me, all the things in life I didn't get was going to be my legacy. Sad Stephanie was going to be it for me. And then one day, some white dude said, you can quit your job. <laughs> you can travel for about uh, $40 a day and then just go back and get another job, right? What a change. Okay. Okay, okay. All right. All right, so we didn't get, <laughs> well, we did get through. We did get through the video. Two and a half hours. I don't know. I'm so surprised y'all are still here. <laughs> I feel like, as my mom told me, <laughs> I told y'all that I was not going to be stern today. Didn't I tell y'all that? <laughs> here I am pointing and preaching. I got my veins popping out on my forehead. My head hurts. I told y'all this was not going to be a stern video. That was a lie. That was a lie. <laughs> okay, so the seven things we do that sabotages our ease. We struggle in silence. 
okay? Struggling in silence is sabotaging the ease and flow that you're meant to have in your life. We need community, we need other people. And then we need to say, we need to have other people who we can go to and say, I'm struggling. Number one, struggling in silence. Number two, restrict, building our identity around a restrictive label. Number two was building our identity around a restrictive label. I'm a superwoman, I'm black excellence, or I'm a hermit, or I'm an introvert, or I'm a competitive minimalist, right? Or I'm a, I, I'm a competitive traveler, right? Be yourself in 360 degrees. Some of these labels are doing you more harm than good. So number two, the second way that we're embracing struggle instead of ease is by building an entire identity around a restrictive label. Number three way that we're re, uh, sabotaging our own ease is valuing money over time. Money is in abundance. Time is not in abundance. If you can pay somebody to do the thing, pay them to do the thing. <laughs> Save your time. Spend the money. Save the time. I'm not a financial advisor. <laughs> But if I get a yacht, maybe you can come and stay on the yacht sometimes. If, I, if that advice ends you in the poor house, I hope I get a yacht so you can come and stay on the yacht sometimes. House sitting and the yacht sitting. House sitting and yacht sitting. Okay. <laughs> but I'm telling you my advice. This is me, my personal opinion. Spend the money. Save the time. Uh, number four thing. We treat everything as urgent. That is sabotaging ease. That is the opposite of ease and flow. Treating everything as urgent. If you recognize that you're not able to prioritize things, if you recognize you're not able to delineate what is urgent, what can wait, what do I never need to do, you work on that. This is a heart attack waiting to happen. It's a heart attack waiting to happen. So fix it. Work on it. A therapist would love to help you work on this. If you're a person who, I, you know, I grew up in this type of environment and that's why I do X, Y, Z, therapy was designed for you. Okay? <laughs> therapy was, there are therapists out there just waiting for you to call her number. Right? Treating everything as urgent is not only the opposite of ease, it's the opposite of wellness. I think we could all prioritize wellness. Even the non-ease people who aren't yet on the ease train, everybody wants to be well. Treating everything as urgent is the opposite of wellness. It's sabotage. Number five, volunteering to lead things is sabotaging your ease. So stop volunteering to lead things. You can just be a participant. You don't have to be in charge of things. Number five, stop volunteering leading things. Number six way where sabotaging ease is we don't have enough lazy friends. Get you some lazy friends. They'll show you the way. Because <laughs> some of you naturally, right, you've got too many generations of being the workhorse for you to ever figure out how to do things the lazy way. But there's some lazy people out there. It's just natural. <laughs> there's a natural laziness that comes in some people. Learn from her. Right? That, that I'm not doing that, friend. <laughs> that, listen, it don't have to be perfect, friend. Learn from her. Where do you find lazy friends? Maybe retreats. <laughs> I'm going to be at Adelia's retreat, Adelia and Ivana's retreat called Reclaim. I'm going to reclaim the retreat next month in March, which is why all, a lot of important things, I'm like, I got to get this done before February is over. I want March to be a more retreaty month for me. The retreat is one week, but I want to spend a good, the whole, a good portion of the month in, in a retreat mind. Uh, so maybe at retreats, that retreat is called Reclaim the Retreat. Reclaimtheretreat.com. There's still spaces for March and November, I'm pretty sure. November is actually filling up faster than March. Reclaimtheretreat.com. That's the retreat that we're sending Lisa on. And that's the retreat that we're selling our t-shirts for, to send Lisa on. Uh, I'll, I'll link in the description the, the link to the merch shop but you might see it under this video.
All right. And the number seven way we're sabotaging ease is chasing income streams instead of creating an income river. Chasing income streams, and I mean disparate, unrelated things, instead of an un income river where things will stream off from there, right? When you have a river of income, things can stream off from it. I have sources of income all related to house sitting, but they are from the river of house sitting, right? My YouTube income, my summit income, my merch, which I give away, my coaching income all comes from one river from house sitting. Okay. That's what I came up with. I don't really like there being seven. Number eight is my favorite number. Eight is my favorite number, but I only came up with seven. How did we do today? Okay. My mom. Hi mom. Hope you feel better. I think that's the first time I've seen you on here today. Hope you feel better. <laughs> Spirit journeys. Yes, I could retire. Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Okay. So who do you need to, do you need a little talking? Do you need a conversation with somebody to just plan things out? Because there are coaches who, plan, who do these kind of things, right? There are people who will talk you through these things, help you figure out here's what you need to plan for, or here's what you need to, you know, whatever. Here's how, here's what you need to take a look at. Yeah, I'm a, good, a good portion of this audience, I think, <laughs> probably could retire and just doesn't know it. A good, I don't know what a good portion means, but like your spirit journeys is not an outlier in this conversation. Black women, part of the results of black women not having, um, the result of black women having to work, you know, twice as hard for half as much is that we have taken our own futures into our hands. We've done a lot of investing, a lot of saving, a lot of real estate owning or whatever, and uh, a lot of uh, job climbing, like la corporate ladder climbing. So a good portion of this audience, you can retire. You just don't know it yet. <laughs> I hope you do. Sonia says, I'm on the road to discovering myself. No journey, there's no better journey. There's no better journey. C.W. Bradford, I'm trying to figure out my first step into the sabbatical process, toxic workplace. So there's a difference. If you think that your workplace owes you money, I'm going to tell you this. If you think your workplace should compensate you for the wrongs that they've done to you, look into that. That may be the money you need to live out the rest of your life. I don't know, right? If, what, if you think you are owed some compensation for what they've done to you, uh, Anne Marie Archer has a new YouTube channel called The Anti HR HR Lady. Okay, her name is Anne Marie Archer. Okay, so when I hear toxic workplace, I hear money, but I don't know, right? I'm not a, I don't know. I think they owe you some money, but am, am I right? Am I wrong? Okay. The other thing that you need to do is just figure out what, what a sabbatical costs you. How do you figure that out? We have a toolkit that gives you some calculators where you can figure out what a sabbatical would cost you. How long do you want to be gone? Where do you want to go? You can ca calculate what that would cost you. If you go to exodussummit.com slash toolkit, you'll see our work from anywhere toolkit. Yes, it's called the work from anywhere toolkit, but it's got some calculators that are helpful for people planning their sabbatical. So I think a good, what, here's how I started my sabbatical. Once those dudes told me I could travel for $40 a day, I started looking seriously at like, really, what do these places cost? What does it cost to stay? I wanted to go to Thailand and, you know, Malaysia, Cambodia. What do these places cost for 30 days? Those calculators that are in the Work From Anywhere toolkit, those calculators are what I used. I, I like Nomad List and uh, Rashida likes the Earth Awaits, but they're cost of living calculators, right? Then I calculated how much do I need to take a year off? Hmm, that was pretty much, and then how do I make this money, <laughs> right? How much does it cost me? How am I gonna get it together? That was it. Now, if you're on the opposite end or like the reverse end and you have the money, you know you have the money, you just don't know how to plan a sabbatical, that is more up Rashida's alley, I'll say. Rashida's channel is Rashida's on the Loose, which has been 
no, Rashida Dow. Rashida's YouTube channel is Rashida Dow. If she's got a video on the first steps to planning a career break, I would watch her video on the first steps to planning a career break, and I would watch my video on the first steps to planning, it might say a sabbatical. We both have a video called The First Steps. I would watch both of our videos. Her perspective is more from a person who had the money, right? My isn't from a perspective of a person who didn't have the money and had to start there, right? Uh, but they're both good perspectives. Rashida has traveled abroad. Rashida traveled on her career break and then moved to Mexico City. Okay, all right, I know. Melinda, girl, I did start out with this is going to be shorter than you used to. I, was, I don't feel good. I'm not going to be here very long. <laughs> I'm wrapping it up. I promise. I promise. <laughs> I promise. I'm wrapping it up. I got a good energy boost. And uh, I don't know. I'm wrapping it up. I did. I, did, I know I started with that. <laughs> not soon enough. My retirement plan started because I found Stephanie February 2022. I'm retiring in May. Congratulations. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Enjoy retirement, right? Enjoy retirement. Rest and get to know you. Find out what you're into or create her. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I think you find yourself and you create yourself. All of that. Do it. I, I hope you enjoy all of it. That's wonderful news. Okay? Okay, so we got through the seven points. Um, Auntie Lou, I know I need 5K to leave, so I need to figure out a way to earn that. Okay, yes, right? You were in the Exodus Summit, right? Are you doing any of the things from the summit? In the summit, we had 19 different ways to earn money, right? Or maybe 18, a couple of more taxes and something else. So maybe 17 different ways to earn money. Pick, pick out one or two. Seriously, we did that because we don't want money to be the difference maker. Money should not be the reason you don't live your dreams. Whether it's $5,000 or $50,000 or $5 million for a yacht, in the summit, the money is there. How to make that money is in the summit, right? I'm going to earn a, I'm going to buy a yacht from the things I learned, right? I, except for, well, book publishing was not in the summit, right? But infopreneurship, that's one of the things I'm doing, right? Which is leading me into book publishing. I think my yacht is coming from either book publishing or a rich sucker. Uh, book publishing is probably the most likely way. We didn't talk book publishing in this summit, but we did talk some infopreneurship things and some teaching online things, which go very well hand in hand with book publishing. Okay. Yeah. Tribe 213, create yourself. That resonates with me. Yeah. Right. What you are today is, is, is that already? You've already done it. You've already, but now is this where you want to continue to be is the question, right? You've already created yourself. Now, is this, is it serving you? Is what you've created serving you? If not, you can, re, you can reinvent yourself. You can recreate yourself. You can do it. I'm, if I don't know anything else, I know that because I did it. If I don't know anything else, I know that. Okay. Oh, Raven, as this got cut off, but Raven says, I agree. 30 plus years ago, I took a year out of my budding law career. It defined my life. I lived on $6,000 for the whole year. That's amazing. Traveled, but it's got cut off, Raven. That's $6,000, but 30 years ago. Okay, that was probably pretty good money back then. 30 years ago was the 80s. No, 90s, $6,000 in the 90s. Yeah, that probably took you pretty far. Good. Okay, all right. Would I recommend a buddy or is it too risky regarding moving abroad? Oh, it depends. It depends. Somebody you know and trust? I don't think it's too risky. Uh, you know, the Golden Girls is my ideal. <laughs> I, would love, I would love a Golden Girls situation. I don't think it's too risky. Um, I don't know of anyone who is doing it that way. I know women who have traveled together, especially the Exodus Summit squad got together in Cancun last year. And after the meetup, some women traveled around together for a little while. But I don't know anyone who's moved abroad together or like living in a house together yet. But I think it's the wave of the future and also the wave of the past. I think it's 
only going to be more and more prevalent and popular as women start to take things into their own hands and decide, like, I'm going to live and just because I'm, I'm solo doesn't mean I want to restrict myself to, like, me personally, right? This $1,800 Airbnb, if there were two or three of us and we had a $4,000 a month Airbnb, oh my gosh, can you imagine? Balling, <laughs> right? <laughs> anyway, anyway, off topic. I don't think it's too risky. I think you have to have good judgment. If you're a person who does not have good judgment, you need to identify that and fix that. But if you're a person who feels, you know, you know, I can rely on my judgment and I feel like I can evaluate other people appropriately. I have good discernment, right? If you have good discernment, I don't see it. I would, I would do it. I would do it. I would do it. <clears throat> Yeah, Golden Girls is a lot of women's ideals. I think we're going to see a whole lot more of it. I just, right now, I can't point to anybody I know. I know women couples, but I don't know women friends, women platonic people who are doing things like this. I know that Kathy moved in with her sister while she was planning her sabbatical. So we do see a lot of that, too. People getting, um, staying with family to do their next, before they do their next thing. But I would really like to see that. I would like to see more women going together on some things. Right. The money savings should not only be to, for the married people. Right. The, or the couples. The couples get to save money on accommodation. We should get to save money on accommodation, too. <laughs> Let's buddy up. Right. Imagine three people going together. Uh, even a th even a three thousand dollar a month Airbnb in Costa Rica is fabulous. Right. Like <laughs> we should be buddying up a little bit more than we are. It's happening. It's happening. <laughs> yeah, but I can't point to anybody right now. If you, friends, if you know of anybody, have them holler at me and let me know so we can talk about it. Okay, we're going off topic. Okay, thank you, friends, for being here. Thank you for, of course, always being so kind to me. Again, thank you for being so kind and gracious and hospitable to Tosh last week. I appreciate you so much. Um, and thank you very much for being engaged and involved in this video and in this live stream. I came here not feeling good. I did not feel good. Uh, I had to cancel, right? I canceled our guests who I think will come back in March. Uh, and I was like, this is not good. <laughs> but uh, as could have probably been predicted if I had been thinking, <laughs> uh, being here in this environment has been really helpful to me and really healing for me, just like it's been healing for some of you at, at various times. So thank you for that. I appreciate you guys. I'm um, so glad to spend some time with you, as always. I missed you last week, even though I was in the chat part of the time. I missed you last week. So thank you very much, very much for being here, for being, um, and for taking good care of yourselves and each other in this chat. All right, we'll see you again next week, same time, 10, 10 o'clock Eastern time. We'll come back and we'll talk about something else <laughs> while I get myself back on schedule with my guests. Okay. Thank you very much, friends. I'll see you again. Thank you. But again, I really appreciate you. Thank you. And again, I'm going to do a more formal update, but Maisha Francis has been paid her money for her sabbatical. We put the, together the money to send Maisha Francis on her sabbatical. She's on her sabbatical. She left before the money got there, and now she has the money. Thank you for that. What an amazing thing that we did together. We need a whole video dedicated to that. We'll have that sometime soon, but thank you for that. Thank you for that. And we're moving it forward. Every round goes higher, higher. So we're sending a woman on a retreat just next month. Thank you, friends. Bye. <laughs>